trying to look at all the things on his shelves that are like good things that I know he's going to say stupid shit that kind of <laughs> make me not want those good things to be in there. What are the, uh, what are the fuck, he's got so much there? Witcher paraphernalia and it pisses me off. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought that was Witcher. It's like... Yeah, Jesus Christ! Does he have? He has like an actual Polish version of the game on the top shelf, just above his head to the left. What the fuck, man? Uh, I can't really read any of those PS4 boxes. <laughs> You're desperate to be like, what else is there? Hmm? What else do you like it's on his <laughs> desk? So it's like I want to make sure that okay, Blue Yeti. I have a Blue Yeti too. You're not allowed to do well. Actually, Blue Yetis are factually shit so i guess i can't really I mean, say anything about that maybe at this point but like you know they they, they, they were pretty good for the price range yeah i mean the, that's why i have one because it was like the mic i wanted to have i was like oh yeah it's five hundred dollars uh fuck marvel he can't like that um gee fuck he's got so much witcher shit it's like how do you like something good but then also like something really fucking terrible Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably end up mentioning it a few times, but uh, Rags is not here currently. He he does want to be here. He's going to jump in the second he's available. And, uh, well, you know, it, 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 there'll be plenty to cover. I'm sure he won't miss out. He'll be fine. Um, and yes, how how is everybody? Welcome to... What are we calling this again? Every, every frame of pause. E fap <laughs> Abbreviated to... <laughs> A name Mi that, hey man, you know, if if you draw anything from that abbreviation, that's down to you. It has nothing to do with us. Look, guys, <laughs> this this usually goes on for about four to five hours. It's time to get your EFAPs on, guys. You're gonna hear all you're, these be, voices. People that... start saying shit like, you know, are you gonna EFAP this video? <laughs> like, sure, man. We'll, oh we'll man, I'm already EFAP. EFAPping. And so yeah, we all EFAP together. Like <laughs> the the audience is here with with the process that is EFAP. So. Yeah, it's I mean, come on, it's really. just three guys over the internet. E-fapping is a totally natural thing for three guys on Discord to do together oh, yeah, while yeah, watching I, videos. I, I probably should do the actual normal thing and be like, we have a guest today, Mr. Smudboy, who, who I've actually been on your channel twice before. You still haven't seen Solo yet, have you? That was our last thing we talked about. You should see that so we can, uh, we can, we can rip into it. Oh, properly. bless your fucking soul <laughs> if that's the case. Well, he, to he told me to, and I never got around. <laughs> I think it's a it. good time. It's a good time to to invite him back so I could actually watch the thing and, and we can talk about it because I'd be like, oh geez, I have no time to do anything. So I might get around to. I think it's out on DVD now, so I could probably get a good copy. Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. And it's uh, it's not as like we're on we're on this right, Wolf. It's not as bad as the Last Jedi. It's just so mediocre, I suppose you'd put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not as bad. Thanks. <laughs> like it won't be as painful to get through because <sighs> I mean, at least there's some shit that's like laughable, like the room kind of laughable. Oh, that's okay then. Is that the thing we don't even? It's, they don't... You're gonna love the the feminist robot ruin Lando. One of the better parts of it, Chewbacca gets to actually uh, affect things more than usual. If because he, he's got nothing to do in Disney Star Wars, usually he's just he's very stat. If people have said he's the same in the OT, he's not the same in the OT. He actually does stuff in the OT, like repairing C three PO is actually pretty uh useful, and you know it, it makes sense that because he's he's you would be good with mechanical stuff if he's he's not like Ray, he's not just good at everything and yeah and, and shooting and stuff. But like you know he he chills with the Porgs for the most part in the Last Jedi, which is just like oh dear, you're really running out of things for him to do. <laughs> Um, and this is the thing, it's like, just let I think a lot of people point out, it's like, Chewie without Han it is difficult to write that and you probably should have just dropped them both or really figured out what you're going to do with uh, Chewie but this film actually has him doing stuff, he like beats the shit out of people you know, when I saw the oh, you're good I was, I was pretty much finished on that <laughs> oh <laughs> um <laughs> I remember before The Force Awakens came out, I saw this uh, fucking... I saw one of the trailers where Rey lifts her head up and she's crying and you can't see what's below her. But it looked like Chewbacca's fur and I was like, does Chewbacca die in this movie? <laughs> Honestly, he probably should have. It would be weird. It's like, oh god, what, what are you doing with Chewbacca now? It's like, she... Oh, I saw there's a, uh, an actor from one of the... 
one of the original movies. Uh, he's reprising his role. As little munchkin. What the hell are those guys called? Uh, Ewoks. Oh, yeah. So he had an interview today with some entertainment magazine. I was like, oh, that's nice. Uh, he's getting a job. Okay. So I guess there's Ewoks in the, the next film. Oh, God. So, Who knows? Uh, Who knows what we're good. for? Thank goodness. Yay. <laughs> also, my lagging a bit. A little, yeah. You hear me? Apparently, yes, not. we can. Oh, you can. Yes. Okay. No, we can't. I'm still waiting for. Left it on Discord. It's so distracting. Guys, don't <laughs> type dicks in the chat. I know it's EFAP, but you got to keep that, like, out of the chat. Under the radar. You got to keep that to yourself, guys. Mallet, when? Yeah, Mauler, when are you going to introduce us to Mallet? No idea what your problem is. Stupid internet. It's never clear. I shall interact with the chat. Rhino milk. <laughs> That's gonna be a thing. For oh, that a while. should be accounted for. Actually, can you can you actually hear me right now? Or am I still just flamming around? Yes. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. It still seems like I'm delayed, probably, which I'll just have to deal with right now. Um, the the guy we covered in the last podcast, um, he unlisted the video in response, if you will, and he said that he wants to make a new one that is more civil and addresses the topic in that he's sharing his opinion rather than trying to say we were objectively wrong. Oh um, my god. And on top of that, he's supposed to be coming on the next uh, next week's EFAP, so... Oh we'll boy. To, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, we'll probably have a Cinema Sins video we'll try and find to, to respond to. Look it. at Jared's DeviantArt. I didn't know he had a DeviantArt. Oh, he does, actually, yes. I've, I've even Do you have that. the link for that? I, I really want to see it now. <laughs> Someone um, tweeted at me, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I got it on Twitter, so you would have been added on that if you can find it. Uh, hey, I've had so many. I've had like 500 notifications in the last hour. I'm not going to be able to find it. Someone tweeted at me. <laughs> okay, someone well, right now tweeted at Wolf. I um, want to see what art, because I've already seen his rags art, which is beautiful. So I really want to see what other masterpieces Jared Genesis has made. And oh my god, people keep doing the, the rhino and the milk emojis <laughs> in the chat. Wait, someone said, Mola, can you watch Mola versus the Critic Subjectivity War? Is that the one the uh, Lil Potato made? Because I, I have seen that and it's very funny. There's a lot of work that went into it, to be honest, in terms of uh, image masking, or at least putting things on top of stuff. And uh, he did share it to the Discord, so it was good stuff. And yeah, hopefully Rags will be here soon, but until... Until he is, we could always respond to the first video. I was gonna say, I did say that we would do it last podcast, and I forgot. But there were the reason a lot of people were like, "Why did you?" Um, uh, say, we said something on the lines of like uh, being called white supremacist by uh, in relation to the Black Panther video, when he doesn't say anything like that. And I was like, "No." What I was talking about was there were, there were comments that said it, and we were hoping, and we said this at the beginning, we were hoping that he didn't imply that at all about my video or yours. Or anyone else's, and he doesn't. Uh, in fairness, which is something that we appreciate, he didn't actually go the go the route of saying that we were racist, and that's why we didn't like Black Panther. He, he literally just stuck to the uh, inconsistent arguments. So there was a comment uh, that did say that, and if if once Rags this year, we uh, we can just read it out with him because obviously he was there for all the things. So until then, we can check out this first video. If if you're both uh, on board with that, are you? Well, let's do it. I am definitely delayed considering right. how long that took for you guys to respond. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, what are, what are you you're not missing much. The, the chat is filled with rhinos and milk. So. Rhinos and milk. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not 100%. What was that? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure that we're actually, like, fucking functional right now. I don't know if I should just go and restart my internet fully instead of waiting until I fucking disconnect to do it. Duh. So awkward. Because I usually connect with... I've got Wi-Fi and then Ethernet, and if either one of them doesn't work, I use the other. But right now, Wi-Fi is just apparently not even responding to existence, and Ethernet is all flaky, so... That's that's where I'm at. And I would fix this problem if I... It's it, fun. It wasn't a problem before I hit start streaming. Everything was fine up until then. So it's just like, uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> and now I can't... I can't you Did know. you run a speed test? 
I mean, yeah, well, the, it was fine. Like, um, no, no, there was no reason to assume anything was going to go wrong, and it must be tied to the fact that I'm streaming. Discord still says I'm disconnected from you Someone guys. asked, how's the socialist Wi-Fi? Oh, yeah, we have shit Wi-Fi here, overall. I really want, um, just to move to a place that just has amazing, uh, internet. <laughs> That'd be nice. If I'm going to choose a place to move to. South it, Korea. There you go. I'll go right there. But yeah, it's going to be awkward to try and... Cause I need yeah, if you're going to choose guys. a place to live for internet, don't choose Australia. So I was going to say, like, I could just... I, I was like, you guys can continue while I restart my internet. And I was like, but uh, this is my stream, so it's, it's not going to work out very well, is it? <laughs> um, Maybe you can just push the stream somewhere else. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try one quick fix. If it doesn't work, we'll just carry on. Uh, my stream might go down, but it should be back up quickly, okay? So, be right back. We shall return, chat. We'll just, we'll just talk amongst ourselves, then. Venezuela. Well, they see that as a complete dodged bullet, to be honest with you. They were like, oh, thank God that controversy came out well after that game was sort of, you know, in the yeah. past. Oh, well, shit, that was four fucking years ago, goddamn. Like Almost exactly four years ago. On a completely unrelated topic, uh, the FFF thing is now really fourth of that uh, Brett Kavanaugh joke about uh, what the all the Fs mean. But uh, I was talking to the wonderful side of politics this Twitter day, so yeah, I don't want to Google that too much just to find out what that means. But well, it's going to be really disappointing if you're like, "Where does this F thing come from?" You're like, "Oh, it's Call of Duty." <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you find out Kevin Spacey was in that game, and it's like, oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I watched The Usual Suspects recently, and I was like, oh, I forgot he was in it. Oh, well. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's just, it, you can't it not, really disappoints me. You have to, you see him, and you're to be like, oh, right, yeah, all that shit that happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, I had, like, ten of my favorite movies have him in it, and it's like, oh, I don't know if I should like this anymore. <laughs> Advise me, Hollywood. How should I feel? <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, I'm good to start on this this video first, assuming everything just fucking works. I don't even know at this point. Let's just hope it does. Um, Someone asked, when's Eric Taxon gonna reply to me? And he asked you as though you would oh, know. <laughs> I think you'll keep an eye on it, right? Because you're curious what he actually will. Yeah, I, I look every few days because I'm like, I'm eager to see... It, well, because, probably, I mean, you know, if your Discord isn't, uh, not Discord, if your podcast isn't uh, soon after he uploads it, we might even fucking put it on here, right? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind either way. Because uh, it'll be amusing more than likely. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just keep thinking of that video he posted, like, uh, not very long, I mean, it was like maybe a week ago, where it's just this guy who looks like, like, uh, fuck, what's your name? Keep forgetting what your name is. Oh, I'm Mauler. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to meet you, Mauler. <laughs> good to meet you. How's it going? I was gonna say it's, uh, it's in the Discord. You can see fuck. it right there. Yeah, I just haven't looked at it. It's what's your fu smud? Smud. Yeah, is that what you want to so, go by? By the way, unless you have a human name you want to use. Or... Smud, Z. smud is totally acceptable. That's fine. Oh, cool. Rags is gonna come in. Oh, there you go. We won't. We won't have to. Got him. I got him. Okay, add. So anyway, um, there's this guy uh, called Eric Taxon who really doesn't like me. Mm. And he doesn't like me because I made this video uh, called The Problem with Forced Diversity, which is a very well-liked video. And a, few a lot of people on Tumblr really don't like that video for obvious reasons, and he's one of them. And this Eric Taxon guy, he like literally looks like the bastard love child of YMS and like some hobo under a bridge. I thought you were gonna say oh. like, <laughs> like Bigfoot or something. <laughs> uh, well, I would say Bigfoot, but that's too manly because Eric Taxon is a transgender guy. Only nope. he doesn't know what his pronouns are. He even says it in his Twitter bio. He just doesn't know what the fuck he is. And he's wearing like this pink shirt and it's this like aborted YMS clone looking motherfucker. And he said he wants to make a video responding to my video on uh, forced diversity. Yeah, and I thought I'm you said so he was fucking... working on it, implying that like it's already a thing, you know, and we should be expecting yeah. it soon. 
and I'm just like really eagerly awaiting him to finally fucking make it. Oh, someone said he's like YMS and sticks and hammer. I agree. <laughs> I can oh, wait, see. Maybe, uh, maybe you, can come to Canada. you can come to Canada and learn all of the proper pronouns that we're forced to use now whenever we people unless they they don't ask to be addressed and it's okay which is kind of defeats the point I, but... I said to wolf he needs to start requesting people call him shalim lumumf and shalom and then whenever they get it wrong <laughs> he could be like how fucking dare you you'd be like yeah you got him nailed it and arrest them at that point it's part of my slavic heritage how fucking dare you um but yes hello rags how you doing doing okay excellent we uh haven't really started yet so you're actually good we've just been chatting and uh so you may as well this is smud boy rags rags smud boy i don't think you've ever met before so say hello hello hey good evening how you doing oh i'm 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 okay oh you sound out of your mind you're right mate <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know i'll i'll hang around i'll hang around you know are you tired like, or i don't know how long if you slept recently or not no. <laughs> no. <What? laughs> no, you have slept, or no, you haven't slept. I, st I I've stared at my uh, eyelids for a while. Okay. Um. <laughs> so we can we uh let me get wait uh the inner machinations of my mind <laughs> are in it. There's the link for the watch together. We're gonna tackle a brilliant video explaining uh. Something to do with the Last Jedi for three minutes before jumping into Movie Bob. Um, oh, this! Oh, this! Oh, this was a bad one. This was a bad one. I, I haven't even seen the whole thing. I only saw as far as where I was like, "Yeah, we'll just do that on EFAP because <laughs> yeah, it'll make sense." So yes, here we go. This is going to be wonderful, I'm sure. Hey, come on, get your oh, EFAPs wait. ready, let's, guys. Let's get this. Let's get this all the way up there. All right. So when I really think about it, it's funny how the most hated movie of 2017 is the best-selling movie of 2018. Oh my god, I fucking hate it already. Um, yeah. what? How many, how many sales has the room had, I, I wonder, out of curiosity? Uh, I don't know if you'd be able to find that now. It would be At big though, right? It would be big. I, oh, undoubtedly. I mean, people, for ever since 2003, have been going to, like, private, th like, theaters showing the movie, like, little theaters showing the movie, uh, or even just, like, fucking college gatherings, they'll show the movie. Just because it's so fucking funny, and, and they've been doing that for it even over have to a be decade. Room. It could be. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty much Justin always Bieber on in Toronto. Tickets, man, it's just anything. Yeah, if, someone in the chat pointed out Fifty Shades of Grey is the fastest selling paperback. <laughs> which, oh my god, that's so fucking disappointing. I can't believe <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Oh my that's god, really that's so disappointing. <laughs> It's like okay, already you're fucking. You've like said one sentence and you're already fucking is, wrong. It's like Star Wars, of course, it's gonna say. sell out. And well, look what look what happened. Because five months later, Solo comes out and it's the first Star Wars uh, movie that ever bombed. And it's right after the worst Star Wars movie ever made. Do you think there might be a correlation? I was there, gonna buddy? say that Infamous so? is a thing, right? He says it like you're hated. You shouldn't be successful. It's like plenty of people are successful via being hated. Like that's a thing. This is, this is... the room. But yeah, I mean, maybe I wouldn't use the word hated, because well, it's like the obvious thing we're trying to get at. Yeah, here the room is kind of left. Is quality that that he's like? Well, it, it depends. Let's, let's quality see if... and popularity have not much to do with each other necessarily. But if you're 12 years old, you think that's the case, so that's what you open your YouTube video with. I mean, I'll just put it into perspective. The one of the first reviews about the room when it came out in 2003 described it as uh, the room is like being stabbed repeatedly in the head. <laughs> that is an actual review of the movie. <laughs> and it is not only a movie that's being shown in theaters like worldwide now because it's so funny, but Tommy Wiseau also has other acting jobs. He just came out with a two part movie that's actually unironically good. He's like got these parody videos of him being the Joker now, which is kind of creepy because it's actually not bad. And just because it's just because it makes money doesn't mean it's good. Look, he hasn't made that argument yet. He said it's interesting that the most hated movie is the best selling, which to me like, doesn't. That's the argument he's gonna make because no, of course. But I was just gonna say like <laughs> that doesn't sound like a contradiction to me anyway. You know, being the most hated thing, but also one of the best selling things. Because for example. 
Mr. Plinkett would have bought the film to review it, and I don't know if you guys got the impression, if you've seen his video, that he loved it. I don't think he did. I think he rather disliked it, and he would have been one of those sales, so... There you go. Yeah. That's already I mean, I, I went into the movie thinking it was going to be good. I came out hating it. it was, it's Star Wars. People went in expecting it to be good. Now people don't expect that anymore. And it's because of this fucking movie. It, but you know he's going to use that argument because that's what every fucking uh, Last Jedi Defender does is they pull these really shitty arguments out of nowhere. Like, oh, it, it made a lot of money, so that must mean it's good. Well, let's let's see where he goes with it. You know, he could. God, this, the rest of this video could be that he's like, you know, what? it makes sense because some things sell well when they hate it. That's probably what it is. Let's 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 <laughs> let's go forward with it. It's not gonna be what it is. So you all know what I'm talking about. Star Wars: The Last Jedi. If you look into your Last little Jedi. Twitter bubbles and your little Facebook Twitter groups of 120 people who all they do is hate Star Wars, it's the worst movie of all. All right, let's go to YouTube. Oh God, let's, here we go. Let's type in. Let's type in the Last Jedi. Let's see what pops up. Oh, the last. Uh, uh, there's Plinkett's review. That's at 1.7 million. Uh, we Still got less than mine. We got Vito, which is at 2.5 million. Why it's a complete cinematic failure. All right, more than mine. Uh, Cinema sins. Everything wrong with it. 3.4 <laughs> million. More than mine. Um, <laughs> Definitely more than mine. <laughs> Oof. Oh boy. I mean, I, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. Well, there's I, a I mean, lot of Facebook. <clears throat> what are you gonna say? Well, there's a lot of Facebook groups that I used to go on. I think in January of this year. I think I stopped in February where they weren't hating the the, the movie. Like there are there are the actual groups that he was referring to that just every day it's like, oh, this is another thing that Ryan Johnson said. And that got kind of monotonous. But there were the the fan groups which were, you get people of all different ages and different uh, backgrounds talking about, oh, you know, if only they made Justin Bieber a Jedi in the next movie and all these other bizarre mm. ideas. So they were just as crazy on either end. And it didn't matter whether they hated it or liked it. There was something that they wanted to celebrate. Well, yeah. So one of the first reactions I saw from positive stuff was like, oh my God, look what they've done with Force Ghosts. Now we can, I, I, it's in my original rant video because I, I saw the comment. I wish I'd put it on screen. But they said, now we can finally see Force Ghosts fight like Yoda versus Palpatine. Doesn't that just sound awful? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's one of those, oh, let's just say that the people who don't like this movie, let's just call them uh, a bunch of, it's just trying to label them as, you know, X group. They hang, hey, there's just these, these little groups of people and they're out there and nobody, there's not really many of them, right? And he's the trying to frame minority. it that these people, okay. yeah, they're, they're a very loud minority, you know, it, they don't pay attention to them because there's not really that many of them. They're just in these tiny little Facebook groups of 120 or whatever. Don't listen to him. All time. Why is it, I, don't, I know that this is not an argument, but why is it that every single person that defends The Last Jedi looks like this? It's just like some scrawny fucking middle-aged man who has so no fucking fun. dick or respect for himself. <laughs> they, they usually say that like people who hate The Last Jedi are usually neck-bearded, you know, basement dwellers. Like that's that's usually what it is. Uh, like like a, as a comment on it, and it's just hey, I, know. I know at least one brown person that doesn't like the movie. That's true. That's true. We we know two, don't we? We know two. A whole yes, two. I always think of Fringy as green, though. So true. I don't know. He's still a person of color at that point. Yeah, he is the yeah. only person of color left. White is all colors combined. I'm a person of colors. We need a Daniel Day Lewis rendition of the Last Green. Last Jedi is the worst thing to ever happen to cinema. Like the room. No one has ever said that. I, I, Fuck off. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think the worst thing to happen to cinema. Like, come on. Who's the yeah, worst thing to happen to Star Wars? Yeah, but not cinema. Is that like? Is someone saying that? Not God, they already straw man. He, he's been fucking a minute. I don't know. I, I think arguments could be made. What well, for cinema, sure? But. I'm not sure what I would choose yeah, as the, I think you could the make film that did the most right? damage to cinema. Interestingly, though, that The Last Jedi has caused such a, like, hmm. um, research... I'm not sure what the right word is here, but basically an idea where everybody's reevaluating critics on YouTube. Like, that happened thanks to The Last Jedi more so than any other film. Oh, yeah. Like this. 
The Last well, Jedi take, made EFAP. Take True. any large franchise, and let's say uh, James Bond, and, and use uh, social media or politics or anything to change the actual formula of what a Bond film is. And it's going to be a big thrust of people who hate the thing now simply because it was not what they were wanted to get. So it doesn't really matter what the formula would be, whether it's a big franchise, that's where a lot of eyes are on it. And therefore, you're going to see a lot of people react to it. It's going to be newsworthy. Mm. So for, for a gentleman like this, if you look at, as we were talking before about the things that he likes, it's everything that's popular. And he's going to have something to say about that. So maybe he has some insight into what actually is popular and why. Who knows? He, he yes, likes the is... fuck out of The Witcher. Yes. Oh, yeah. I was talking about that before we went live. It's like almost everything in this frame is Witcher related. And it makes me angry because it's like you're not allowed to have good things around if you're going to make shitty arguments like this. Still, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I would pick for film that was the worst thing to happen to cinema. It just seems so, like hyperbolic to me but again uh worst thing to happen to star wars maybe I, I could definitely see arguments for that it's like high caliber compared to the last jedi okay and of course it's all the fault of the women in the franchise oh so nobody's God. gonna fuck off what uh, um, yeah I've, well, I've, I've never heard this i, well, I guess <laughs> I, this guy's a polygon writer i guess or something because no one's ever said that it's never been said by anybody I, I guess ever. maybe he was right. He is referring to a fringe group of like three dudes across the entire internet who said that uh, it's the worst thing that happened to cinema and it's because of women. Is it the, the women on the editing staff or was it just the women in the movie? I'm guessing it was the women in the movie. Cause... Well, I, th I think no women are safe. Yeah, actually, it's any woman that had any hand any woman in the ever. production. Actually, no, yeah, any uh, woman at all. <laughs> just <laughs> unrelated to Star Wars, even those ones. <laughs> just the concept of women. Schrodinger's woman. Buy the movie. Nobody saw the movie, apparently. Even though Star Wars track record shows you that the middle of every trilogy well, is the weakest one. Well, well yeah, it's because all Empire the Shrek's fucking women in it. I'm confused. That's a Clearly. very that's a very poor uh, understanding of storytelling, or just to say a, trilli a trilogy in general, that the, the second part of anything is the worst one. I, we were just talking about Lord of the Rings and I was saying how much, well, my knowledge of Lord of the Rings is but I was saying how much I liked The Two Towers. It was probably my favorite part of the, of the whole trilogy. So to say that uh, uh, a movie franchise that happens to be a trilogy and the second one being the weakest, I'm kind of curious where he's going with that. Did he, I mean, Empire is universally accepted to be the best Star Did Wars he say movie, it was the that weakest? Was the middle, so. A quality, or did, he, or did he imply that it's the weakest for view count? Because it did seem to be maybe that it was aimed at popularity rather than uh, quality. But even then, it sounded like view count. I'll just I'll just run it back. I think he he was saying that, but even then, I don't I don't Apparently. know that that's true. Even though Star Wars track record, show yeah, Star Wars track record. I don't know how that could possibly be true. I don't know that why the middle the of every trilogy good. is the weakest one. The weakest in general, yeah. Weakest one. Is it? No, that's what he's saying. I guess so. Attack of the Clones and Empire Strikes Back. Weakest one. Did... Well, like we can compare it. We can compare the genres to, let's say, movies or video games, and say, well, look at a popular space opera. And I know Mass Effect, and Mass Effect Two is perhaps the most popular uh, version out of all the three. So and I don't know what uh, what he's getting at here. People are pointing out Spider Man Two and The Dark Knight, and that's. Oh yeah! Wow. Okay. Well. Again, if he's I'm, just saying the amount of views it grabs is typically the second one takes a dip compared to the first, maybe. Maybe he means popularity, sales-wise, or... I don't know. Is he trying to say that that's an explanation for why it would have done worse than The Force Awakens? Because, I guess. Yeah, they, yeah Aliens, uh, Back to the Future 2, The Godfather, The Two Towers. He's very ambiguous. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where he's going with this. The video pointless. Well, no, he's saying argument ad populum. There, uh, because it didn't sell the most, uh, it's the worst. And again, we're looking at a guy who has all kinds of popular paraphernalia around him. But this is the world he's in. If he's saying Last Jedi can't be that bad, considering it's the best seller, he, when he's just admitted that Empire Strikes Back sold the worst out of the originals, even though it's typically looked at as the best, doesn't it mean that these oh. things don't connect then? We'll see how his argument flows. We don't. We're not sure where he's getting at. No. Empire Strikes Back. 
I mean, first off, the Phantom Menace is worse than the Attack of the Clones already. So you're <laughs> wrong on that front. Are you sure? There's a lot of discussion so about hope that. The Last Jedi is the worst. In- According to the, the worldwide box office for the original trilogy, the, the first uh, have made the least, but five and six are really close. So. Mm. that, But it's one thing to go with that. It came out in theaters, and it carried on Oops. selling insane numbers. And at this point, we got the September reports, and it's the top-selling Blu-ray and DVD Blu-ray. worldwide. <laughs> I've, okay. And the comments of his videos imply that he's not really interpreting that all good. Someone, um, someone said that uh, Black Panther outsells it in home media. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not exactly certain. Is he trying to argue that the release date of Infinity War has anything to do with sales? Jedi? Is- I mean, Infinity that- War didn't come out a couple weeks after the last Jedi. It was like months after. Was it? Yeah, because oh, yeah, it didn't yeah, yeah, come it was, out yeah. long before. Because Solo came out not long afterward. Also, I've, yeah, and, I've made a small fix. And that fix. was five months away. I've made a small fix. I'm hoping my internet is, is level now. For anybody, because in chat, I was noticing a couple of people picked up that not only is the stream a bit laggy, but that everything's out of sync in terms of I say a thing, and then you guys say a thing way later and, and the video. Hopefully oh. it's fixed now, so just, just updating. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, in, Infinity War came out April 27th, so the end of April. So a couple weeks, December, guys. Uh, uh, January, February, March, April. So four months. It's is, possible, but that's a third of a year later. I'm still stuck at how meaningless this all is. Anyway, best selling does not mean that it was not bad. Well, yeah, the whole the whole premise of the point is that if it's so bad, then how come a lot of people spent money on it? And and the fact that he's already registered the. Empire Strikes Back, assuming he's right, sold worse than the first or third in the original trilogy. To me, I'm just like, okay, then. So we agree, this is meaningless. Yeah, and if Rhino we're talking milk made more sense than this, you know, if we're talking numbers, when it comes to like Blu-ray sales, Blu-ray sales of the Last Jedi are way behind the Force Awakens. As he just said, though, the second one always takes a dip, so that explains that. Get fucked, rags. Checkmate. All right. <laughs> and United States. So, does any of that hatred actually correspond to anything that people are saying? Because let's be realistically talking about this. Let's be realistically well, talking uh, about this. I know. It's like every other word that comes out of his mouth. It's like, oh my god, your language is bad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem if it's not for like, it's like, it's only three minutes, dude. You could have like, you know. Give it another shot. Eh, whatever, it's fine. It's fine. I'm really Listen. disappointed by the fact that he's playing The Witcher Three on a fucking PlayStation. It's okay, man. Every, every, he could, con- he could also have it on good. his PC, maybe. Besides, but this this video is basically, of course, God's real. Look at how many people go to church. Also, yeah, I just realized he may have the controller. That doesn't mean he necessarily plays on the console. Well, there's still hope. Still some hope. Hates this franchise. All right, and I hope. Then why is it making so much money? Hates the franchise. Then why is it making money? Why is that hard to believe? Like, what's hard to what's hard to register about that? Beaver, One Direction. I mean, it's like I swear this is a twelve-year-old. Oh yeah. Well, if it's so bad, then how come it's making lots of money? Well, he definitely talks like a twelve-year-old. Oh yeah. I'm just stuck at the, the the point where it's just like yeah, as you guys just said, Transformers. How'd you explain that? If Transformers it's, was so bad, then why is it selling so well? Explain that. Just lame. Make a better argument. <laughs> why are people buying this movie if they hated it so much? A lot of people aren't. You know, that's why, a, a, a lot you're, of you're people aren't. You're taking the sales. You're taking the sales from when the movie like first came out in theaters, which doesn't fucking count. Because look, uh, just because the movie made a ton of money when it came out doesn't mean anything. Because look, I went into the movie thinking The Last Jedi was going to be good. It wasn't good. So my opinion adjusted accordingly. Just because the movie made a lot of money when it came out in theaters, a Star Wars film, like one of the most, like arguably the most popular movie ever of all time. Yeah, yeah because of course it's going to make money. 
Because he's saying basically that, oh yeah, well, The Last Jedi is in a rune sale on Blu-ray. And he's not saying that The Last Jedi Blu-ray sales are 56% of The Force Awakens. Also, and that's, when that's was this, a huge drop. When, when was this video made? Can <laughs> you look that up? Uh, I want to see what was made at September 19th. Yeah, of this eight year. days ago. Are, okay, are you fucking kidding me? No, it's public knowledge that Solo was the first Star Wars movie to flop. And it's the first star. It was the very next movie after The Last Jedi. And I have it, it, said just, for a while that I would assume the damage from Last Jedi would be seen in either Solo and uh, Episode Nine or Episode Nine. That it wouldn't be seen in The Last Jedi sales because people bought The Last Jedi going into seeing the sequel to Force Awakens. You know, I would like, say that the Blu-ray sales and have a bit to do with it because if people saw it and didn't like it, then why would they buy the Blu-ray? Well, see, this is a complicated subject. So you've got a lot of different factors that that come in. For example, the debate we had with that guy for the first time. Well, he actually, despite us explaining extensively how much we really hated the movie, he he still asked us like, "Well, you're still getting the Blu-ray, right?" <laughs> and he was like, "What?" And he was just no. like, it, "It seemed odd to him that you wouldn't buy a Star Wars film." Like that's something exactly. that you that's something everyone does. You just do that. You just you know. And it's, I imagine lots of families were just like, Yeah, let's 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 buy it. Why not? We'll pick it up. And then you got people like Plinkett, uh, several other reviewers who despised this film, who were like, Yeah, we need to buy it because we want to see the extra features to be able to make a cogent complete review of all the information we can get. There's so many Wait, different I, I have the Blu ray of the room on the shelf. I'm looking at it right now. Which means it's good, right? <laughs> yes means it's high quality entertainment okay well yes objectively it and, there, is high and there are some people who didn't watch it in the cinema and they were like yeah i'll just get it when it comes out and yeah i mean i don't know why we're arguing all this anyway because it's just like this is pretty this is pretty fundamental stuff i'm pretty sure solos blu-rays will take a huge hit like they're not going to be popular but that doesn't mean that uh I wouldn't even say that's evidence of Solo being bad, because I think Solo's better than The Last Jedi, so... Yeah, I'm curious. I think the best way to find out is what's... N not maybe sales numbers, but the like the percentages of, you know, sales in relation to Blu-ray, you know, like box office to Blu-ray as a comparison, not, you know, just raw numbers. Is what percentage of, you know, people who saw Solo got the Blu-ray compared to what percentage of people saw The Last Jedi and then got a Blu-ray? Oh dear. Well, I mean, there's not much left, so... <laughs> ...pacing so far ahead of so many other movies that apparently people love. I I'm just asking a question, They're not right? begging the question. And then, I know people are gonna bring up, ah, oh, but it killed the brand, it damaged the franchise, look at what Solo did for numbers. I mean, look at its merchandise, world-class bullshit have gone through that extensively. Oh shit, it's bad. The massive damage to the, to the sales of merch, I guess you'd say, overall. As for the Blu-ray sales, like I said, there's lots of ways to explain that, but I suppose this fundamental question is, how do you know it's done damage then? I'd be like, I guess I'd go with the, with the merch argument, but overall, I'm already aware because of the amount of in, the insane portion of comments I've had on my videos of people basically saying Star Wars is out, Star Wars is done, they're never gonna you know, give Disney, Disney another dime. People will refuse to watch MCU movies because of what they've done to Star Wars. It's like the this didn't happen before, uh, as 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 extreme. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, it's like, what would you buy when you when you think of a lot about the Lost Jedi? What would you buy a toy of? You know, who in that movie makes you want to go? Man, I want a toy of that person to put on my, you know, my, in my collection. I, I really want this character. I want. I mean, granted, that character won't be the same character in the next film, probably. Well, but what about the last Jedi? Makes you go, man! I really want a toy of this character. Well, Bob Iger just released. Like that, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Bob Iger uh, released a, a comment two days ago about the slowdown that they're doing now with the franchise. So, whether that means that they're paying attention, saying, "Hey, uh, we realize biggest flop did not make any money, and a lot of money we did not." Uh, is not going to be made on DVD, or they're hoping that Kennedy believes that they're hoping that they're going to make money on the DVD. Uh, that's a very hopeful uh, to say. Well, it, the mildly. interesting comparison is like, oh, are they slowing down the MCU too? It's like, no. <laughs> MCU is like Ho three Hope movies is a year. like the sun or some shit. 
This is the thing. Well, it's had, it's had a real impact how bad The Last Jedi is. And that was the other thing, just one last argument on top of all this, like, for why I know it's affected Star Wars. The Last Jedi has got piss-poor writing. I already know that's going to have damage. Especially Luke. What happened to Luke? You've, you've done irreparable damage to Star Wars as a fucking franchise when you destroyed Luke. Pretty simple. Yeah, I saw a, uh, a video recently from Star Citizen, that game that's coming out at some point in the history of the human race. And uh, Mark Hamill's in it, and Davo Seaworth, so that's fun. Hmm. But people in the comments were like, Mark Hamill's acting more like Luke in this movie than he did, or in this game, <laughs> rather, than he did in The Last Jedi. And it's like, oh, man. Literally, if there's a movie where he's like a member of government arguing for policy on, you know, some, some shit in 2023, it's like a futuristic-ish movie, they would just be like, man, he's, he's close to Luke here than <laughs> in The Last Jedi. Well, in Star Citizen, he plays as like an actual, like, captain, starfighter yeah. pilot, yeah, or captain, or whatever he is. And it was like, oh. Mark Hamill's actually being Luke, but in a video game. Dude, I can yeah, see, he's... like, directors or something being like, should we just should we just fucking make a movie about, like, a space wizard? <laughs> Be like, hey, Mark Hamill, come, come play it. Go on, we'll just give you a movie that you should have had. <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be the best. That would be absolutely... <laughs> called Planet Fights. <laughs> <laughs> Planet Fights. Moon Wars. <laughs> One, Solo had two months of marketing. Two, no, it was it right there next to Deadpool. You're insane. You're just making shit up. I don't think De okay, Solo had two off, months of Dead marketing. Deadpool 2 didn't come out for another month after Solo and Infinity War. And Infinity War and Solo didn't come out until five months after The Last Jedi. You're just blatantly getting shit wrong. Yeah, because Solo was May 10th. Infinity War was April 27th. I'm, and Deadpool too. I mean, I remember I watched that when I was on vacation here, right? in Colorado. He's June. like, he's like, okay, so I've just made the argument that so uh, Jedi, Last Jedi hasn't hasn't had an effect on the marketplace, uh, like people want you to believe. And then it's like, oh shit, I've got to account for Solo. It's like, uh, that came out at the same time as Deadpool two and Infinity War, uh, and it's it was it badly out. marketed and a uh, bunch of other stuff. Like there you go. Deadpool two was May eighteenth. Oh, okay. So Deadpool two was after. Okay. But the thing is, like, we're it's treated as though Star Wars has to like come out on its own because other franchises will stop it from being successful, which is ridiculous. Well, he's saying that Star Wars is at a point where it has to, like, where Deadpool, the Deadpool movie, is a, a threat to a Star Wars film. Yeah. What? I gave my ticket money to Deadpool two and walked into the Star Wars theater. So yeah, <laughs> it, it is a threat. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I, I mean, I don't know about you three, but like, I'll be seeing the next Star Wars film almost as a joke. I'll be like, this will be fun. Well, oh, yeah, I'm just, to... I'm just curious. Yeah. And that was how I went into Solo, so yeah, I'm not even going to remotely take Episode Nine seriously. And like, at this point, I'd just be like, is this video trying to argue that The Last Jedi can't be as bad as people are saying because it should have a more detrimental effect on the marketplace? And In which case, I would just be like, you're done, because... Plenty of bad things make money. And it's just like, stop trying to make up for it by being like, Solo came out at a difficult time, blah, 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 blah. I, I, I agree that there's other elements that would have cost Solo, uh, uh, you know, money making abilities, but like, there's no way you can deny that the hatred towards The Last Jedi would have had no effect. At least one guy didn't go and see Solo because of The Last Jedi. That was a thing that happened in this world people that wanted a solo prequel from the beginning i mean i didn't think i needed it i really loved the movie but i didn't think i needed it before sure, it happened. No, of course you did so sure you did. there's a few reasons to look at why solo didn't do as good as it did but the last jedi is a completely whole different story and then let's completely not even bring merchandise story. into this because i've seen the reports <laughs> that i can't talk about yet and we'll just wait till the end of the year to talk about star wars toy sales because um, uh -huh. you don't need I'm to wait till the end of the year work Bullshitters has already talked about it a hundred times now. I was about to say, he's... like, he's got some real ass evidence. And this is the thing, Jeff is obsessed with, like, he knows his shit about toys. 
Like this is <laughs> it's like his forte. <laughs> so I would be interested to see him and this guy discuss <laughs> how the toy sales. We don't even sales... need to talk about toy sales. We'll talk about that at the end of the year when I get my speech well, impediment. He just implied that he's got special information that he can't reveal. I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> Has at the been... end, yeah, why I'm curious why toy sales would get I mean I generally you'd think that once the movie releases that would be you know, then the toys start coming out and such and such, but you know, there's this, there's a pretty big gap in Star Wars right now. Very simple so, logic. Like do, do you want to get your Holdo and Rose Tico toys, guys? Like, no. They well, lame. I remember when I the other day when I texted you that picture of that really stupid looking Dustin toy from Stranger Things. Oh god. And yeah. it, it's <laughs> It's like, oh my god, I think people would rather buy that just because it looks so you, funny that... I can't even see people wanting to get Phasma toys now, because you'd just be like, oh, Phasma, the lame-ass that just fucking fell down a hole. Yeah, remember all the cool shit she did? Like, um... And die? For anybody you know, who's like, that's uh, the same as Boba Fett, it's like, Phasma didn't do anything. Like, Boba I don't Fett even like did Boba... stuff. Like, I don't even like Boba Fett, and I'd rather have a Boba Fett toy than a Phasma toy. God, yeah. And I don't even want toys. I would take Django any day over Phasma. Well, oh, that's, Django. Not, that's not a surprise, because... <laughs> I'd play as Django Fett in Star Wars Battlefront 2 rather than Phasma. Although I don't own Battlefront 2 because I don't Mate, like If it made you games. bulletproof, you'd pick it. Let's be honest. Um, I'd just mod the game. <laughs> if, the, if the blaster bolts would hit my armor and bounce off and hit my teammates, then yes, I would. You get booed for friendly fire, like, oh man. Boo! Phasma Pretty sure! Without telling you, that it's gonna be way higher than you think it is. So No, it's not. What, way higher than know. you think it is? That's okay, so vague. So... What? <laughs> yeah, okay. I guess he's got special access I... to information. Well, I mean, what we I don't... think it is, is that they're in absolute, the shit, they're just in the absolute shitter. We gotta, no we gotta remember this and take it to Jeff sometime just to see what he says because uh, I'm oh, interested. Oh, absolutely! Because <laughs> Jeff's made how many videos on this? A right? bunch. Yeah, I've seen them. I mean, he's made. He's had some really super compelling evidence to prove it. Well, he, he goes into the and stores guy, and he goes to the Star Wars sections and they're full because no one gives a shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, and then this guy's like, "I don't. I'm going to show you the evidence at the end of the year." Well, it turns out those Admiral Holdo and Rose Tico action figures are selling like hotcakes. Well, this is in the interesting Rwanda. thing. It's even stuff like Millennium Falcons aren't selling as much. Like, like it's all going downhill. And well, no, I, mean, I remember apparently, one apparently this guy's got additional like... information that he can't That's share sure. yet. So we'll just have to take his word for it. You trust this guy, right, guys? No, I I couldn't. I don't. I, no. <laughs> Also, He's playing The Witcher 3 on a well, PS4, again, I already don't trust him. Well, the, the, the thing I don't trust is how those figurines are standing on top of that computer monitor. Yeah, I don't, I've been trying to figure that out for That's the past a plot like, hole. five minutes now, and it's, it's really... Because the, the stands me. are clearly, like, circles. They're circular. But the top of a computer monitor is very thin. I think I so, see, like, a little, is there a like, shelf a little behind plank it? behind it. It looks like there's a little shelf right there. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you look to the very left of the monitor... It still bothers me though. Very strange. Very strange. Apparently, Movie Bob's released a video. I've heard this from a couple of people where he he's uh, basically sort of accidentally or purposefully shat on the first two Predator films, and uh, he's dis he's disabled <laughs> oh. he's disabled comments as well because of the backlash already. So like, really? like okay, <laughs> the, the, the second one okay. I I didn't like the second one, but the first one ooh. I mean, I still, to... I, I'm interested to see what he would say, but like, yeah, the first one, good luck trying to criticize that. It's going to be tough. Like, it's a, it's a very uh, tight film, but, you know. Is it the same kind of criticism as, uh, what's his fucking stupid name? The guy who hates you a lot. <laughs> Which one, dude? There's this a few of uh, those. The, the one who has the super punchable face with that ugly, like, not good beard who oh. drops <laughs> Citizen Kane. I think you're talking about Quentin, aren't you? Yes, that's it. I mean, uh, fuck. Well, we're gonna get a whole dose of movie Bob in a moment, so. Uh, oh, God. This movie's the worst thing ever, and everybody that. hates it. Nobody's saying everybody hates it. Mm. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a constant discussion about how bad it is. Let's be honest. Comes from. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. But. 
if your argument is is it has this guy's not going to be pleased with the comments on this video <laughs> i haven't I'll checked them are, right they, now. are they not they're they're about what you'd expect <laughs> I mean, in fairness to him, he, only had, he gave himself three minutes and 20 seconds to dismantle the idea that The Last Jedi is bad. It's like... Based on toy sales. Yeah. I, what's, the, what's the like to dislike ratio on it? It's less than... It's less than 50. Let me go back. <laughs> it's at 47%, but it's only got like 10,000 views. And this is from a channel with 452,000 subs, which is odd. Wow, really? What's yeah. Can you find out what his thing is? Is it usually not this sort of thing? Well, it's Comic Book Cast 2. Um, it's an online geek culture community. Our mission is to deliver content that helps you embrace the film, TV, comics, and gaming that we all love in a unique way and having a few good laughs in between. And this channel gets shit for views. Sounds like next-gen tactics all over again. What are the? I'm just checking the most popular stuff. Hulk versus Thanos in Avengers: Infinity War. Hulk is terrified and afraid. That's their most popular video. Okay, seems a bit. Seems like you don't need to see that video after that title. <laughs> that is a very strange title. Spider-Man like live-action yeah. suits compared and breakdown. Compared and breakdown is. Oh, that's I guess it's like so, the actual literal live-action suits compared and breakdown. I guess that's how they wanted me to read it. Breakdown. Dude, why is Thanos different colors in the MCU and Avengers <laughs> Infinity War? <laughs> well, hey, you know what? If that's working out for them, they, yeah, all the top videos of the MCU, basically. Um, oh, boy. You guys Pass keep going. Stone. I gotta take a piss real quick. Well, yeah, well, I'm sure there's not much left of... At Asians? <laughs> or a woman leading the army who has purple hair and it's not acceptable, <laughs> but well, a fish man me. who's only ever yelled well, it's a trap? Me. <laughs> All right. So you so saved the best arguments for the last, I guess. Yeah, this is this is pretty insane. Asians or a woman leading the army who has purple hair and it's not acceptable, but a fish man who's only ever yelled hey, it's that a trap. Fish is man acceptable? is beautiful. I was about to say that's that's racist, dude. Just because he's a fish doesn't mean he's not qualified. Yeah, like, come he's, on. He's, he's, he's shitting he, over Admiral Akbar. Do you have a problem with salmon-colored skin? I can't believe you. I'm upset by this. He's. It, he's he's basically I you know it's the whole you know if it's women or Asians it's bad, and Admiral Akbar is a shit you know, the idea that Admiral Akbar who's an established character should have uh, should have been the one to replace one of them I I don't know. And I th I think the whole ball gown and purple hair thing it's like it's a very it, it's fucking very confusing to see. Yeah, like a lot it's of people the ball are, gown. That, yeah, that for threw general, me off too. If you're gonna if you're gonna be a leader of time scenario you don't wear a dress yeah this wear... isn't trump's resistance or something that you do from home this is a war in your general don't you have like badges or like a hat or some sort of insignia or... it's really distracting so and this is the thing it's like it does it so that ruins the movie it's like no it's just something to pick up on isn't it no it's just it's very weird and distracting like imagine she was dressed like a like a Che Guevara with the bray and the the vest and whatever, like she would look like, oh, she's part of a resistance team in space. Maybe make it a space age style resistance outfit. Maybe she's ready to hop into a fighter. Maybe she's ready to to lean back or something like a like a diplomat, something. But to dress like you're about to go to the prom or or go a night in the town, it's like at least give me some visual understanding of the setting that you're part of that I can connect A and B as opposed to. I'm in charge because the story told me I am. I wonder what percentage of the resistance's budget is for hair dye upkeep. So and they can't afford Y wings. Since uh, uh, well, Wolf's gonna be back in a minute. But since you were, I, I said I wanted to say this when you were here, Rags. But in the last podcast, we mentioned that um, there was there was comments about white supremacy, and I was just gonna I'm pasting you the um. Uh, the snap of the comment. I was going to say, if you want to, if you want to read that out, it was in relation to mine and subsequently Wolf's videos on Black Panther. And we, I, I was going to say, you can, you can stop, and we could respond to bits of it if you want to. All right. So what is so this video? This comment was posted on what video? Um, this is on the the one Cinema Sins Sins made. The, the last. I mean, we responded to it two days ago. Oh yeah, the the one oh, that's what are we unlisted about now? now. The one he made unlisted. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was awful. <laughs> yeah. 
All righty. So this is in response to, okay. Um, so Turbo Nerdo said, this video Mahler made is teetering dangerously to white supremacy, which is in <laughs> capital letters, white supremacy. <laughs> because the main criticism stems to advanced society and African culture are incompatible. No, oh my God. <laughs> no, no, no. It's interesting. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How do you get that from all this video? Advanced society on. and African culture are incompatible. Um, well, it's not that they're incompatible. There does, there does not seem to be an immense amount of um, overlap between those two. But that doesn't mean that they're necessarily incompatible. There's, there's loads of um, people shared post, uh, pictures on Discord of modern African culture that's blended with technology. It exists. If you remember, one of the big things I pointed out was how embarrassing the design team were. And they were like, okay, so we're going to have these slick steel towers. And it's like, cool, cool. How do we involve African culture? It's like, well, you know, like straw huts? We'll just, we'll just shove one into one of the towers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it, how that like works. The, the movie gives the impression that poverty is African culture. Yeah, that too. There's a lot of they stuff. They should that... have just, like, you know, the, the big lake that was next to the city. They should have, like, added, like, one of the Haiti garbage heaps right in the middle of it. Because that's African culture, man. It's like you can have things like dress and design and style to reflect, you know, some kind of African culture. But that doesn't mean that people have to be walking around in the streets like this is some kind of a, a low-class, poverty-stricken marketplace neighborhood. Those aren't the same. But it does look like the designers of the film were like, "What? what when people say you know, Africa, what, what, what gets people to think about Africa? Oh, mass poverty. So let's chuck that in, too. But it's very interesting that he thinks that. Uh, <laughs> maybe he got that from the whole... May, maybe he got that from the whole trial by combat thing, which is retarded and has yet nothing another, to do with African or European yet another or example. It's like that's that's that is a thing that you only find in like a tribal society because of how is completely impractical it is and how self destructive it is to a society. I mean it's in Game of Thrones, so that means it must be advanced, right? Oh yeah. And, and that that works well for everyone. Uh, you play his ridiculous claims up for laughs, but I think it's a dangerous reminder of inherent biases that society is being equivocated with Western culture and anything else is considered barbaric. Well, kind of is, but, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, would I w I'm not saying that I agree with the statement. However, whatever is the most advanced culture, would every other culture not be maybe not barbaric, but Less civilized, less civilized by comparison? Would that not be the logical conclusion there? Yeah, well, I don't... You could make the argument that uh, the inclusion of technology in the society, because it's a hidden society and they're as uh, inconspicuous as possible, that they're just sort of slamming stuff together. So you have like this amalgamation yeah. of uh, rural and urban areas and you just sort of th thrust together. And then you can look at the tribal aspect of, of the African culture, the dance, the drums, the the rhythmic sounds like these can be incorporated. It's just that would you think someone as sophisticated as intelligent would not say, "Hey, you know what? Let's uh, let's clean up this place. It's kind of dirty." Yeah, it's and like we can in, we can make Black Panther suits. You know, we have access to this advanced technology, but we're also simultaneously not intelligent enough to understand that trial by combat to determine who our dictator is is self-destructive to the society. Which, yeah, and, some, and somehow that hasn't actually had any detrimental effects to them yeah, since I their mean, inception, which is crazy to me. Yeah, you're talking but, about technology versus social... So stuff like that you can get away with, as well as being a comic book. Have you ever read any of the Black Panther comics? It is a very tribal system, so it's like, okay. Well, but if you're talking I mean, about... I don't, I don't care too much about the comic books, really. Well, if the comics assist the uh, the, the reality of it is like it's, it's irrelevant to the to the film alone, if you will. But uh, from what I've heard, the comics make more sense than the film does. Right. If you're talking about uh, levels of other things in science, medicine, a hierarchy of people who are on the top, and there are there is a some sort of aristocracy, 
And then they would have people beneath that, serfdoms, if they're doing a, a monarchy, uh, stuff like that. There's, I think there is a scene where there are people in, in villages or huts outside mm. the, uh, the, the closed off city. So the that would have Wakanda. to be, yeah, right. It's, it's like a front, but it's still part of it. So there has to be some sort of amalgamation that slowly and slowly removes that as you get to the higher level tech. And that's fine. It's just that it can't just suddenly be, hey, we have chickens and cows running around on our on our tower, or um, you yeah. know, we're we're not we're we're gonna ride on horses even though we have spaceships, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't make sense. Like it feels like somebody decided let's throw tribal and high tech space age stuff together, and it's like, well, yeah, that's what they did. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm saying that my immersion's broken because that's what it yeah, looks regardless like. Regardless of how much sense it makes. Um, but yeah, just to, to counter their point anyway, um, I know about other cultures, or at least I'm aware of other cultures outside of Western that I don't consider to be um, non-advanced, I suppose. Like, I'm not stupid. Asian culture f for any country is completely different from Western, but it doesn't mean it's it's barbaric compared to... I mean, uh, look, I, I'm just saying Western culture got us to the moon, Eastern gave us anime, and, well, one, one's better than the other. And what did Wakanda do? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Japan just landed. What are those uh, references? I think Japan just landed a uh, a probe on a, a meteorite or something today. Like, there was well, big... they, they still had anime, so well, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah anime is more value than that, of course. Exactly. Um, hey, come on, Death Note's great. Yeah. So, he... yeah, he's uh, uh, the comment goes on. Seriously, these were the arguments being used when Britain were in the height of their colonial power. Um, except back then, uh, the argument would have been correct. As if, as if that's why I'm making this argument. I spend more time with American culture than I do with my own at this point online. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just find this ridiculous. It's like, oh, come on. As if, uh, what God do I save even... the queen. <laughs> I, <sw> <laughs> like, I can't take it seriously, but this person is that convinced that I'm, I'm completely brainwashed by my Britishness, and I also... <laughs> I'm dangerously close to being a white supremacist. Like, come on. <laughs> I literally just criticized your stupid little film about a superhero. Like, <laughs> you don't need to extrapolate this. So what you're saying is make Britain great again? Yes. And we do it by annexing Wakanda, even though it doesn't exist. All right. Which some well, people I have trouble with, by the way. Some people do think Wakanda's real. I mean, look, I have some German heritage in me. I think we need to make Germany great again. Let's bring it on, guys. Holocaust 2.0. Let's go. I want to. I want to take this Turbo Nerdo guy and ask him if Western civilization or the continent of Africa is more advanced, and watch him his head explode because he won't want to admit it. Anyway, he says, "I expect this attitude from Heart of Darkness, not a YouTube video in 2017." <laughs> Heart of Darkness? Are you serious? It's also 2018, but whatever. <laughs> it's a weird mistake. And this attitude is ironic, considering the film being criticized, one which extensively attempts to normalize and represent African culture, and by showing the inherent problems in this society, despite its African culture highlight, that these issues are utterly human. What? What? Uh... <laughs> I didn't follow that one. Well, Heart of Darkness is uh, a very classic story, and you read in at least high school level. Um, <laughs> how that relates to, I mean, you're talking about steam engines going down, uh, going down the river, and uh, Jesus, slave trade maybe? Like, dude, what? how this relates to dot dot dot. You could say that for this entire comment. <laughs> uh, how this <laughs> relates to just. <laughs> This attempts to normalize and represent African culture and by showing the inherent problems in the society, uh, in the society, despite its African culture, highlight that these issues are utterly human. I don't know. Fuck you. <laughs> Moving on, though. That if given technology, these African tribes can consider us as primitive in the same way that we view current third world nations as primitive. Yeah. Uh, but, again, what? what? So... I guess he's I guess he's saying that if you give advanced technology to African tribes, they would consider us primitive. <laughs> um the th No, they they'd use it and then they'd kill themselves. They don't know how it works. Yeah, they they would probably self-destruct. Yeah, I, uh, 
May as well just keep like, keep going. Like I'm sorry, but there's a reason why. Okay, no, I probably shouldn't say that. What were you gonna say? <laughs> African tribes are barbaric. Well, I was going to say there's a reason why African, like the the best African countries, are like only just above like third world. But then I was like, mm, that's probably not the best way to word that. I mean, there are some is, places in Africa that generally don't look uh, like the, yeah. They look I mean, there, there, there's parts of like South Africa that look modern, but then you go out of those little parts, and it's like, oh, it's the rest of Africa now. Look, I'm gonna, I don't. Is it really a secret that Africa's not doing so hot right now? Or that any is like is that, see, that opens up is? that opens up arguments about how much of it is is Whitey's fault, isn't it? Like that's what. The, well, yeah, because the, they they don't have any. Uh, oh, yeah, it's all, it's all colonialism's fault, and things were just amazing and wonderful and dandy and magical in Africa until the white people showed up. Is like, yeah, yeah, they, they have no agency. They can't take any responsibility for their own failings, so they have to blame it on white people. So it's like, okay. I mean, it's this always... is the thing. It's a, it's a, it's a whole discussion. There's a lot of history to go over, but like, um, wh why are we talking about all this? <laughs> you sort of like take a step back and be like, I was, it's very strange. I, I was just criticizing the design, of the ideas of this culture and how it would have lasted. So I was just like, no, this is all because you're British. These people are desperate to justify trial by combat. <laughs> it's so odd as a viable. It? it is very strange. Like I, that's why when we were watching that guy's, um. Uh, review response movie thing um, uh, video is the word I'm looking for uh, when we were watching his video and I was like man there's I wonder what he's going to say I, I'm sure surely he'll just skip over this part and agree with you right because there's no way you could defend trial by combat as an effective and justifiable political system under dictatorship is like nope he did never mind well, uh, All a, right. fu a funny note by the way in I think it's season seven or six of Game of Thrones. I think it's six. Uh, they outlaw um, trial by combat because it's too primitive and barbaric. <laughs> and it was a kid that outlawed it too. <laughs> but yes, it was a white kid. Still alive and it, well. It was a this... white kid. It, it was a, a beautiful Aryan white kid. Are you saying that, are you saying very, that very Aryan very children are too. smarter than adult black men? I'm just saying there Wolf may have been some truth. Wolf. I, I, look, I'm just saying. Wolf exposed. I knew it. Not, not everything about Hitler was bad. <gasps> that's true. Well, that's true. The Autobahn. I heard he's a good painter. And he did he, he did um, scoliosis checks. He did like animals. Yeah. And he did city beautification projects. I mean, not a bad idea. I wonder if he liked animals as much as Kiro the Wolf. Guess anyway, we'll if we can just, just <laughs> knock out the last um, bit. Yeah, he goes on by saying Mahler missing this and criticizing the film as such is only reinforcing the importance of the narrative he is critiquing. Wow. What narrative would that be, Mahler? Um, White supremacy. Uh, Mahler missing and critiquing this film as such is only reinforcing the importance of the narrative he is critiquing. I'm confused by that. He, he's, he, I think he's saying that your arguments support your argument. Hmm. Well, no, he's he's sort of painting a picture that there's culture, there's white culture, there's thing. Is it is it really about white supremacy at this point? Because he went through African culture and then things being primitive and well, he's lumping all of African culture together for starters. And I didn't say anything because you know it, it's people. I don't think he was doing it in a malicious way, but there's multiple. You know, African culture is not one thing. Reinforcing the importance of the narrative from the film, I'm assuming they're trying to say, which is that um, in in the film, we kind of view themselves as above other societies because they're more advanced, and and that's looked at as an issue in the film. Which, by the way, like I'm happy to admit that's a thing in the film, and I think he's saying I missed that, and it's ironic because that's my issue that I view Western culture as above and beyond every other culture on Earth, because obviously that's this person's take on my video for some fucking reason. And, well, and first off, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with saying first world countries are not culturally better than third world countries? It's offensive. Is that, is it's that racist? A, is that incorrect? Well, I mean, if there's I a culture where you like, chop things off and fight each other to the death to earn the well, right to... Well, we're about to get into that with the end of his comment. Oh. So... Let's 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 tackle that. Um, that culture does not make one better or worse. That spiritual beliefs 
are independent of the need to build bridges as a society that no group is superior or inferior to another group. Oh boy. A message that has clearly gone our whoosh over Mahler's head. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> so, just simply not true. Yeah. Some so, groups are superior or inferior to some other groups. Cultures, some cultures are shit. And I would I would not shed a tear if some cultures in the world disappeared. Like what if the what if there's a culture <laughs> like hypothetically there's a culture where it's just tradition once every week to to eat a bowl of shit. Jews. Is that is that's just not superior or inferior. That's just their culture. Leave them alone. Well, there's a reason why there's a very large uh, rate of people going and traveling to the United States every year as opposed to any other country in the world. So Maybe it's because they like the taxes to be a certain rate. I don't know. Maybe they like arguing about politics every day. I don't know. But they like going there more than everyone else. I think so there has Turbo, to be a maybe Turbo Nerdo believes in like cultural relativism or something I mean, along those lines. It's funny because Possibly, I, yeah. as of recently, there's been a, a couple of like, you know, there's been a lot of, because of Article 13 and other shit that's going on in Britain, there's been a lot of arguments. It's just like, man, we wish we had your First Amendment. That would be nice. Like the, and and you know the idea that uh, we kind of want a bit of your culture the the idea that we consider that better than ours you know and it's, it, does that you, I'm supposed to be a, a supremacist for my own culture right according to this person so why would I ever be jealous of a culture or, or assume that it's better in with a different culture at that point wouldn't that be impossible well, there's nothing wrong with saying one culture is better or worse than another based on the context of what you're evaluating. Yeah. Obviously, you can't say every single element is perfect and best, but as a whole, in general, in the majority, yes, you can totally say a first world country over a second or third world you know, is better. Western civilization, the culture of Western civilization in general is way better than like the culture of the Middle East. I or mean, what would you rather? African culture. That's just like, your opinion, that, right? Yeah. You'd rather and, live in, uh, you know... Afghanistan or America? Well, I guess if you ask a feminist, they'll be like, oh, well, they treat people so nice in Afghanistan. I was going to say, by the way, but, uh, but yeah, that's that's to explain why we thought that there was a chance in the video that he was going to label me a white supremacist, because someone in the comments came to that conclusion, but apparently that was just completely irrelevant to the guy's video and my video, apparently. This is the kind of thing where it's just like they clearly had that thought well before they saw either mine or uh, the guy ripping me apart's video. I guess they just wanted to say that. Either way, I suppose it's time for the main event, which I think me and me, me and Rags are the only people who know Movie Bob relatively well. I assume out of the four of us, I didn't know he was part of the Escapist. I did, yeah. He was, he was only recently back with the Escapist, as far as I know. Yeah, it, Escapist said they want to be apolitical, and so they hired Movie Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I know about Movie Bob is that he's pretty much insane. Uh, he says a lot of things that Movie make Bob's absolutely no sense. Nuts. And well, Patrick yeah. Willems respects him, so he must be good. Yeah, Patrick Willems an, did say he's a traditional Movie, reviewer. Movie Bob is an unironic supporter of eugenics. Yeah, well, and he so gets, am I, but you he know, gets I'm very the correct one. He said many times across the internet that uh, we should do anything we can to prevent Nazis from getting any kind of win. That's like his goal. And if that, say for example, a Nazi said, I love my daughter, she's a wonderful person, Bob would be like, kill her, kill the daughter, do it. <laughs> you can't let them win. <laughs> any, there are no bad tactics, guys. Do anything as long as it stops the Nazis from winning. And then of course it comes down to the very sad reality that, um, what is the criteria for being a Nazi these days? It's like, well... It's loose at this point. You could, um, you could just, you know, have a com You could say like, um, Brie Larson should smile in the new trailer for Captain Marvel, and you you'll be dangerously close to that label already. And what's interesting is that his his videos don't get that much views, especially for the Escapist channel. Well, he's been around for a long time. I've always I've known the name for a very long time, and I always assume that anybody who's been around for long generates an audience just by virtue of existing like um for Brett Kane I, I, I can't believe movie Bob's quality in his videos have, has always baffled me that he gets anything beyond like a thousand views so I always be like wow people really do like that but you know in fairness let's give him a shot this is um in terms of timeline Patrick Willems made his video 
and uh, it got a huge amount of backlash. Then Movie Bob decided to double down on it for him, and this got a bunch of backlash too. But he speaks fast, so we're probably gonna have to do a bit of um, you know reversing every once in a while. But is everybody good to go? This is gonna be enlightening. Let me um, put more water in my bottle. Speaks fast, Ugh. trick you into thinking he's smart. Just like certain other Jew I know. I will read some super chats while while he's getting his drink. Um, Mola, did you ever get your D D rank handler license from Rags? Sooner you get it, the sooner you can rank up. I um, is that? Do you reckon he, he chose D rank in reference to um the male sexual organ guys? I'm trying to be very diplomatic here. That is inappropriate. We never swear or have any crude jokes on this stream, so. Um, are you going to review or talk about the upcoming Ivan Ortega's Last Jedi re-edit? I've not seen it, but Smudboy, you, re you, you referenced that earlier, did you not? Yes, I was curious when it was coming out. I did not know it was released. I uh, wish we could. That'd be great. Um, Infinity War is the most expensive anime ever made. That's probably true if you consider it an anime. Black Panther outsold <laughs> Last Jedi. And, and this is the thing, I don't even know, say for example a great Star Wars movie came out and Infinity War outsold it. As far as I'm concerned, it's like that might be normal at this point, because I think that the MCU somehow is actually the biggest selling franchise now instead of Star Wars in terms of movies, which is a mantle, I suppose, they've been trying to earn for the past decade, so they finally have it. Um, is he the bastard child of Christy Winters and Kevin Logan? Is that referencing... Um, Whoa. Who's the guy again? What's it? You remember his name, right? Uh, Wolf? The one who's making a video on you eventually, Eric something? Eric Taxon? Yeah, I think that's what that's referencing. Oh, uh, no. I, well, I don't know who I... Who, yeah, who, I don't know who, who Christy Winters is. I think I know who Kevin Logan is. I recognize the name. I know the name Christy Winters. I don't know what she looks like, but I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I think Eric Taxon is more of a, you know, a botched Christy clone Winters. of YMS. Christy Winters is a crazy feminist. Oh, well. Kevin Logan is a crazy feminist. Oh. Makes sense, too. <laughs> Uh, okay, the last well, those two and why are you why are you talking about them? Oh, someone someone asked if those two put together makes uh, Eric Tax. Do you say it's Taxon or Taxon? Is that... Taxon. Yeah, Eric Taxon. Eric Maybe. Taxon makes uh, really terrible music. But it ain't a um, it ain't a compliment to say somebody's a mix of Kevin Logan and Christy Winters. No, I that ain't I no imagine. that ain't no compliment. Uh, the Last Christian Jedi's sale thing. numbers aren't fully available, if I recall correctly, at least in terms of home releases. Apparently, they're good enough right now to, to for him to have made that video. Dude sounds autistic, to be honest, kind of explains why he likes The Last Jedi. I mean, you don't have to be autistic to like it. I would just say that, you know, it's interesting <laughs> to <laughs> deny... It might help. <laughs> it might Someone help. said her name is Fisty Splinters, get it right. This one's got Always Remember, and it... Uh, I'm not even sure here. Guy shouting at dog and then milk is greater than rhino milk is greater than cow milk. Guy shouting at dog milk? Uh, I, I need the meme explained. Um, not to mention people collect movies. That's, yeah, there, there's plenty. Like, well, we did mention this. Like, there's going to be people who are buying it just because they're like, I want to have all the Star Wars movies. And it's like, did you even like the new ones? Like, no. <laughs> but I want them anyway. Um... Female-led movies with high ratings, Kill Bill, Alien, Aliens, Moana, Frozen, Hunger Games, Run, Lola, Run, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, I don't even... The whole female thing is frustrating, to be honest, because it's just... Uh, it feels like a smokescreen. Uh, these apologists are going to look even more stupid in a few years as Star Wars continues to sink it. They'll keep making apologist videos anyway. I think that at that point the narrative will change to Star Wars fans have ruined Star Wars, as opposed to uh, the films being bad. The narrative can always shift. Um, is it bad I enjoyed Solo? It's definitely not the best, but it was certainly better than The Last Jedi in terms of tone. Only bad part was SJ Droid. I, I yeah, You can enjoy it, it's fine. It's just that I I thought the character's plot and there's a couple of things with, with, with lore, if you will, just the, the Millennium Falcon being the main one where there's a lot of hits to take. What, what would you give it as a number, Wolf, if you, if you were forced by gunpoint to give Solo a number? A number rating for how good it was? Yeah, like out of ten. Uh, four. Yeah, I'd say I'd probably go with a four. Four sounds about right. Um, don't forget Jumanji knocked off the Last Jedi. True, Jumanji was a um, surprise hit from what I know, right? Like it did really well and people didn't see it coming. It was just like I've heard it was quite good. 
Yeah, apparently it was entertaining. It, it, it is actually a pretty good movie. I enjoyed it. I don't think it's amazing, but I had fun with it. It made me laugh. That's all I need. <laughs> Uh, hard to compare the earnings of old Star Wars because you have to compensate for inflation. How many screens did they play and how long they were in theaters? That's true as well. He wants to wait until the end of the year to talk about toys because of Christmas. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Uh, again, I don't think Star Wars is going to have a great year, but we'll see. If you guys yeah. haven't finished Ripping Movie Bob, he released a video today re revealing he doesn't understand basic plot points from the first two Predator movies. If that video is available by the next time, we, we might check it out because... I mean, is anyone uh, Rags Wolf? You guys have both seen Predator, right? At least. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen the first Predator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shout out to Sean Ranklin. I don't know who that is. Public Sean service. Ranklin. Yeah, <laughs> Sean Ranklin. Yes, Sean Ranklin. High five. Uh, public yeah, service boy. announcement about to come into direct contact from Movie Bob. Everyone, take your iodine pills. Limit exposure with frequent pauses, and and you can reduce the risk of cancer. I mean, I'm sure we'll make it. We make it through even the craziest of stuff. Bring Joseph Anderson in here. I would happily have him guess, but I think he would want to not do this because it's too crude. He would, he would, he would be upset at the idea that we, uh, we take reviewers to task. Probably. Uh, in Black Panther, Wakanda didn't have guns. In Infinity War, their swords were now guns. An odd rat combat makes no sense that they had no guns. Um. They fired one blast from one spear in one scene in in Black Panther, and then in Infinity War they're all firing shit tons from them. So I'm guessing that it's some weird. The, the way they edited it, it almost seems as if half well, like at the very end of the movie or something, some guy was like, "Hey, wouldn't it be cool if the spears shot lasers?" And like, "Oh, that is cool. Uh, how much of the movie do we have left?" So like, no much. <laughs> throw, throw it in. I don't know. Just put it, edit it on a scene later. When the Orc Society in Warhammer 4K makes more sense than the one you wrote, you have a problem. Agreed. Um, invite, it does kind of. Invite Decker Shadow for uh, Predator and Star Wars. I I would be on board with that. I'll see if I'll see if he's up for it on Twitter. I will I will try and get a message out. Um, Kiro the Wolf, unbridled rage. When. <laughs> <laughs> Bob eugenics a good ship, but tell movie Bob the Last Jedi was a win for the Nazis. Yeah, that'll get us on, uh, get him on our side, I suppose. Bob, get the Calippers Chipman. That uh, that unbridled rage is on Medicare's channel. Um, love love your videos and your streams. Keep up the good work. Movie, movie Bob was wrong. There are no bad targets, just bad shooters. I work with a lot of autistics, and Ugh. most don't like the Last Jedi. Where's the token brown? I'm afraid Fringy is out today, and I, I'm not sure I'm, if Abba Ben's available, but... I will be trans brown. There you go. And, and who uh, are you to deny me my identity? The last one for now, uh, do you guys like the Clone Wars TV series? So, I've only seen one and a half or a little bit more seasons, and so far it's, I would say, meh, but I'm apparently supposed to be coming to better stuff soon. I know Wolf... Season 3. Wolf is like... <laughs> Boo. <laughs> like entirely with, with Clone Wars. I'm not sure we uh Rags and Spud stand on this one though. Uh, I haven't I've seen, seen it. a lot of clips. I, yeah, I haven't seen an actual episode, but uh when I was doing research for even now for Kotor, uh like the power levels of uh the uh like Yoda and other compared to other parts of the franchise, like they're this is the highest as as they are. Like they can do some really crazy crap. So um I don't know if that's a good thing, because you can't just have Jedi just moving planets around. But uh, for the story, like that, that a Jedi is powerful and, and uh, it takes a lot to get rid of them, it kind of defeats the idea of what happened in the prequels, where they just knock out Jedi like no big deal. It kind of subverts that also in the original Kotor and Kotor Two, where you can get uh, guys who are just really sneaky to kill a Jedi. So. It, it sort of humanizes them a bit, and, but in in the animation, it sort of makes them even bigger. So I think people like that. They like the the super powerful Jedi characters, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. And right, unless they're talking about the um, the cartoon, uh, the the one that had the little shorts in them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that one. No, no oh, people, right. well, people yeah, there generally is... reference the three D one. Yeah, there's the two D and the three D ones. Yeah, the two D ones were really good. Yeah, they're that's really good. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, and Ryan Johnson apparently name dropped you on Twitter more part of a scummy joke, I think, uh, or smarmy joke. Uh, maybe he's watched videos in Last Jedi. From what I can tell, it has nothing to do with me. It's just a coincidence. He's like referencing something that uses the word Mauler in it. And uh, if you judge from the the responses, there's nobody there saying like, "Oh, taking a shot at a YouTuber who came after you" or anything like like like, like, like that are upvoted. There's a lot of people just referencing some kind of story or something. So yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with me, but. Uh, Thank you very much for all the donations. Are you guys ready for Movie Bob? Sure. No. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'll ever be ready. You have no choice. Ha! Ha! He's fat. That's racist, dude. Today's episode is inspired in part by a recently viral YouTube video called Shut Up About Plot Holes from Jesus Patrick H. Willems. Christ, so if you'd like a more fast. That is fucking... That is, yeah, this is uh, why we're going to have to do a lot of rewinding. He speaks really fast, and I don't is know that, why. Is that I thought Ben voice? Shapiro talked fast. I mean, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, is this guy, like, trying to sell me something? Well, this because, is the thing. I don't know, wow. I don't know what's, what is the point, exactly. But, yeah, we're going to have to... This is going to be tough, but here we go. <laughs> I already feel like rewind can a little like, bit. Can you like slow it down by like? I don't 25%? think I can. Oh, I hate that face. Is a that recent him? viral YouTube video called "Shut Up About Plot Holes" from Patrick H. Willem. So if you'd like a more detailed, why are we talking about this context? You may want to. Then what's the EFAP episode about? Shut up about plot holes. <laughs> yeah, we've responded Featured to this that channel. One. Yeah, because when you when you type in "Shut Up About Plot Holes," that ours is the second thing that pops up after the first. Is shitty it, video. Is it definitively that, or is it just because of your... You remember, search results do sort of go towards your biases. Mine or... are the only one that matters. <laughs> if you try it in, like, incognito mode, see if it pops up, that would be interesting. But, um... Do you think he talks fast to, like, make people not even realize he says something stupid? Um, yeah, even in incognito mode, uh, we are the number two result if you type in <laughs> shut up about plot holes. Sweet. We are number three. Also, every other every other video is apparently shitting on Shut Up About Plot Holes. <laughs> there's yeah, there's very few people who fucking support it. Aside from yeah, Bob Chipman, apparently. <laughs> also, if one hundred ninety thousand views is viral, then every video we make is viral. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, let's... So if you'd like a more detailed why are we talking about this context, you may want to check it out there. And while you're doing that, maybe check out and make sure you're subscribed to the Escapist YouTube channel. No. And perhaps you'd also enjoy following my YouTube channel. Anyway, in this video, Willems Ugh. essentially communicates three main points in descending order, that the overwhelming majority of film criticism and or analysis video essays currently popular on the web seem to be mostly people attempting to find funny and or angry new ways to read off lists of quote-unquote plot holes from individual movies that the already nebulous definition How of what is it nebulous? It's nebulous uh, definition. That's it is, yeah. It is. Well, people, first off, don't even know what a plot is, let alone what a hole to apply that as a negative I, thing. It's pretty straightforward, though, right? Plot line, hole in the line, plot hole. Uh, sure, it depends on what you describe a plot, though, and then what a plot line is, or I, what a storyline is. I would say most people know what it is, but if you ask them to define it, they might have a hard time doing it. Well, that's what's nebulous, right? Because there's so many definitions, and there's the same way with any literary term, theme, and pacing that we have a good idea, and that when you say there's a hole, we're saying, yeah, there's a gap in something, whether it's the theme or the character or the, the motivation or what. Yeah, it's, it's, we know what's, something's bad. We just can't quite describe it in, in the way that's classically used. So uh, I don't really get very... Uh, liturgical on these sort of ideas because you feel something's wrong. You can't quite articulate it, but you know there's something off. That's all that really matters. I mean, like, uh, for example, with my videos, if I notice that, um, you know, uh, Jake Skywalker is doing something and we're being told it's it's Luke, instead of saying it's a plot hole, I usually say it's a character inconsistency. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that because it's much clearer. Because what you'll find, I at least find, with the people who are defending The Last Jedi and several of the films, they usually open with people don't even know what a plot hole is and so it's always just like does that does that completely undo their complaint 
the fact no, that they may have like, labeled it wrong? This is a shitty thing. It's just not the shitty thing you thought it was. I mean, yeah. not even everything that... I mean, me and Muller, in our videos of The Last Jedi, not everything we talked about was necessarily a plot hole so much as it was something stupid or inconsistent. Exactly, yeah. But that's what he boils it down to, is a plot hole, because Bob is not a smart person. On a pair of observations I find it very difficult to disagree with, and that both of those adjacent facts have had an overall negative effect on how we as a culture watch films and absorb and retain audiovisual entertainment. I don't agree. Um, I, f I feel like the vast majority of audiences are, are enjoying <laughs> films just as they always have. We as a culture do this. We as a culture don't do that. Eh, big, broad general generalizations are just... Uh... Not a good argument to make. I mean, I I mean if anything, if anything, me being more analytical about movies made me appreciate the good movies a lot more. Yeah, I was about exactly. to say that it'd probably be better if people did care more because That's not then a people concept. would have to write better stories. This is this is the big problem uh, that I've noticed with Movie Bob specifically is that um, he will pretend like he's listening to the opposition and, and arguing against them. But you know, obviously, the easy way I could say this is straw man. But I I, I genuinely don't even think that. Uh, he has any semblance of thinking it's a straw man like he actually is convinced that everybody thinks uh, that everyone on the opposite side is the way that he's portraying them in his videos and it's like you just don't listen to these people at all you have no idea what they're actually saying you're just like yep everybody now watches films just to point out plot holes and this is because of i mean i'm not saying he said this but like a lot of people are like this is because of cinema sins this is because of whoever else and i'm just like i still have yet to find someone who says that cinema sins is a great standard for film criticism like, have you found anyone that, say yeah. that? I never heard it. I've, people always I've tell me it's just say, for entertainment. Yeah, it's funny. I've never heard people say that they watch CinemaSins to know whether or not a film is good. The fact that CinemaSins rips into every film in existence, to me, sort of like, isn't that evidence that they're, it's not like they're actually, it's not like they have actually have a standard, they're just sort of ripping everything down? Well, they're consistently ridiculous. Yeah. And again, I'm, I'm, don't don't conf uh, confuse this with me saying that CinemaSins is good content. I'm not. I'm just saying that uh, I find it interesting how much people blame CinemaSins for um, everyone hating movies. So, yeah. As a long-term experience by training a generation of audiences that the smart way to view narrative film is through a pedantic, overly reductive lens that grants outsized value to mechanical precision and flowchart box checking. See, but I can do the exact same argument in, to him in reverse. You know, he says we're, say for example, if he's a, if he's referring to us that we're overly reductive, as in we take what is a cool idea about something and we reduce it down to this person walked here at this time and that doesn't make sense, therefore the idea is broken. I could I could make the reverse argument to say he's um he's overly. What is the opposite? What is the overly antonym? Overly forgiving, or he's got very low standards, or he um. What's the antonym to reductive? Anything. Is there an answer oh, to reductive? Let me check, because I have the source. Antonym to reductive? Uh, well, uh, it depends when you're talking about story analysis. You could have... Uh, a, enhancing or enlarging. Yeah, go with that. Movie Bob enlarging. Well, <laughs> what, what, what I'm saying is they, <laughs> they take something that's I would actually argue sometimes is benign, and then they make it amazing. And they just talk about how it's amazing. Like, you know, like Just Right takes the Holdo thing and then turns it into this incredible act of storytelling when it doesn't even make sense at the core. So what they accuse us of doing, I'll accuse them of doing in reverse is what I'm getting at. And yeah, 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 pretty pretty much, yeah. And I, feel, I don't know, I thought someone, anyone else was trying to say something if I've stepped on anyone's toes, well, you're welcome to in go. in regards to the, the structural approach to critiquing something, uh, it doesn't have to be overly structural. You, could, you can minimalize every single aspect that a, uh, a story needs to have. And it, it depends on how fine-tuned you want to take it. If you're doing a drama, then obviously you're going to focus on emotion. Uh, if you're doing a, a space opera, then you have to focus on sensationalism and melodrama and the elements that make that franchise or that, that subgenre work. So, yeah, if you don't have uh, lightsaber battles in a Star Wars movie, it's probably not going to be one of those boxes you have to check. Uh, it's the same with uh, the other franchises like Bond. Does Bond have a gadget that does cool things? Does Bond get into a car chase? Yes or no? So that doesn't mean you, you can't do that or cannot not do that, but it's something you expect because you've seen it before, and you know how this is going to play out. So unless they give you something equally good, like Bond is in a, a high car, a high speed uh, plane chase, then uh, you're going to be missing out on what you expect. Hey man, we got our, we got our space war, we got our battle on Hoth, 
we got our lightsaber clashed in that flashback with Luke and uh, Kylo. That's enough that for you, is isn't true. it? There you go. You, all those boxes were checked. But yeah, um, <laughs> I don't. Uh, me and Wolf has have this criticism a lot that we reduce what value you can get from films. While our counter argument is that we may reduce what value you may get from certain films, but the whole goal is to appreciate the ones that did the good job. As in, we get a few people going, "Oh, hey, I didn't actually realize that that was, you know, the case for this film," sort of thing. And we'd be like, "Yay, victory!" And the the whole point is that we're not supposed to be running a narrative here. We're actually just trying to find what's going on in the writing for each project. Obviously, we'll have our biases. Um, like, <laughs> the, let's just say the new Buffy for me and the new uh, Lord of the Rings for Wolf. We're probably both going to be going in pretty pretty much on the side of this is going to be shit compared to what we had before. But we'll still yeah, try. Sure. And, yeah. uh, and we'll explain it in terms. Every little time. We'll be like, this is the formula, these are the pieces of evidence, and then someone can watch it and be like, okay, you were wrong, you got this wrong, and then we'd be like, oh shit, you know, or we got it right, and it, even with our biases, we still managed to pull through. But sure, reductive, fine. Importance of theme, characterization, emotional connection, etc. And ob Okay, we're gonna have to rewind, because fucking hell. Overly reductive lens that grants outsized value to mechanical precision and flowchart box checking, while diminishing, if not outright dismissing, the importance of theme, characterization, emotional connection, etc. And ob so themes. Um, yeah, but this is the thing, though. I don't actually. It's a meme, but like, I don't think meme memes. I don't think themes are, <laughs> are worthless. My point in the video was that the themes are broken in the Last Jedi. I understood what they were going for, but the the execution was horrific. And the existence of themes alone, whether whether or not they were executed well, is not enough to just say the the movie's now good. It has theme. Well, yeah, you're I talking mean, about another very nebulous term. Theme can be many things to many people. Characterization, again, not so much nebulous, but there's all these different ways you can characterize something with setting, with dialogue, with the way they dress, the way they walk, the way they talk. Uh, yeah, these are all important. And if you know how to hit those notes, then you can do you can tell a story with no dialogue and just have complete characterization in 10 seconds. But obviously, so, in context, they're talking about the theme that failure is the greatest teacher and that all of us can take that away from the movie and realize that when we when we fall... It is an opportunity for us to, you know, rise in future, which, again, concept-wise, that's fine with me. Um, Execution-wise, it's completely... There's conflicting elements in The Last Jedi that confuse the hell out of me in terms of how that works. For example, Poe's yeah. whole storyline, he does the right thing at, at every turn, and he's completely chastised for it, and apparently that was his learning curve through failure. It makes no sense at all. Yeah, I'm not against themes either. I'd reference it almost every time we stream now, but the gray has a ton of themes that are pretty subtle that make the movie way better than what it is if you take them out. And the movie does it really well. Unlike The Last Jedi, where it gives you all these themes and then gives you just such a horribly contradictory, broken movie that doesn't make any level of logical sense so that the themes just don't work. Yeah, themes very inconsistent. And it's interesting where you said, like, uh, we potentially outright dismiss the emotional value when it's just like, I can't tell you what you felt, and I completely accept that you would have felt potentially anything from 0 to 100 in any emotion. Same for me. It's just, that's, that's a different discussion. I completely accept that that's 100% valid. If you want me to talk about what it made me feel, I, I, I'll happily do it. But again, it, to me, I'm just like, that's a different conversation. I don't ever say that feelings aren't relevant whatsoever, I guess. Yeah. But what what we can, that's the thing, when you talk about emotions versus things like plot and structure and characters and things, it's it's really hard to argue with somebody about emotions, but what you can do is you can say, all right, A happens, B happens, C happens, and we've established that there are these rules, and there are things within the film that go against these established rules, and we can point them out, yeah, and like in most circumstances, you can agree with people on what those things are. And you can form arguments and you can discuss and analyze those things. If you take this is, of course, have anything to do with the feeling that you have about yeah, it. Provide, well, actually, I think you can analyze the feelings or the pathos of a story just as well as you can the or any other. Well, I, I would say, I would, no, I, I don't know. I, I think that when you look at a more objective criteria, you know, like a plot hole compared to how you felt about you know the emotional rise you get out of a scene 
then that's far more, I think, worthy of a discussion. Well, to give an example, oh, yes. maybe if this, if this if this helps clear it up, like Canto Bite, if if someone describes it as boring, like definitively, they say like this is a boring sequence. My brain immediately says like, well, I found it boring, but boring is like to be bored is something that people feel. Therefore, you can't know. Like, there's plenty of people out there who have been excited. There's plenty of people out there who have been scared by Canto Bite. Who knows? It's, it's really difficult. You can you can then use objective uh, like uh, measurements to try and explain why you felt boredom, as opposed to why everyone will feel boredom. Is is kind of the line I suppose we're trying to draw here. Yeah, we're we're not looking at the reaction that you personally get. Like you could like something, I could say, yeah, this is a very dramatic scene for you, or I could say it's a very dramatic scene for me. But you're like, yeah, it was it was kind of dramatic. That's not that's not the path that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the elements within the scene that we can all just step back and remove ourselves from and say, okay, we know why this character is acting the way they do. We know the reason why they are feeling or they are trying to do something. That is where we can derive our own reaction from. Oh. We're not measuring our reaction. We're we're looking at the characters doing their thing. So like, you know, the reveal for, you know, uh, Vader being Luke's father, you'd be like, that's easily a scene of, of shock. And uh, you, can, you can describe that through what happens, maybe the music cues, the acting. You can use the extra media on top of that. Yeah, but you... Like that whole that whole scene by itself to know that someone is your dad, like that just the idea of that, and then see how it looks in, in Luke's face. Yeah, your reaction to that will be holy crap, but you can understand what's going through his mind right there just by looking at it. You don't have to contemplate exactly what's going through his mind. You have to invent it. You can see it, and it's very clear. Oh yeah. So those those elements are 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 completely objective. We don't have to say, well, I was feeling way more sad than you were. That's why I think it's the best scene ever. No, no, no. That's not what we're getting at. We're getting at the mechanical components of the composition of a scene, which have the ethos, logos, and pathos within them, and how they they work to you believing in that scene and what the scene is actually showing you, not your your your, your emotional reaction to oh, this is extremely scientifically accurate, or this is way more dramatic than before, or whatever. No, no, no. It's just the actual elements we're looking at. I agree. Because <laughs> the, the I think what he's what he's doing here is trying to imply that you cannot argue those things mechanically, and uh, yeah, that's very strange to me to for yeah. me here. Observation: I also find it very difficult to disagree with because I can't find any reason to. Yeah, another recent essay released a week prior by Lindsay Ellis, a negative but thoughtful review of the live-action remake of Beauty and the Beast. Do you hear that negative but thoughtful? I'm sp I'm sure that me and Wolf. Could never fall into that category. Negative. negative <laughs> <thoughtful>. <laughs> no negativity. These are gentlemen. Negative well. but thoughtful. Also, question: Does anybody negative critique is by default not thoughtful? Have you noticed he's been putting up the title and then the YouTube link as if anyone's going to type out that YouTube link as opposed to just the title? Like, maybe it's got a hyperlink or something. If it was on in, the screen, in the description, yeah. that would make sense. Well, you can't have annotations now. I don't think there's any way to actually do that other than. The little things that pop up in the top Cards, right, but I don't think yeah. you can have. Can you have like that many in that amount of time? I don't know. Man, can you imagine like how shitty it must feel to get a shout out from Movie Bob? Hey, man, Patrick Willems <laughs> must have felt great because he shouted right back out. I guess. <laughs> Express some of the same sentiment amidst a digital context that popular culture's that current plot hole fixation has reached the point of making films themselves worse by encouraging filmmakers to craft narratives more concerned with responding to or heading off criticism by mechanics of- but That's not true. The idea that we've gotten so obsessed with mechanical consistency that films are now bad because they're trying to be mechanically consistent, that's not a reality we're in. Yeah, I don't know where he's pulling that from. I'm, I'm interested to- I don't know, it's like he's reducing- every piece of criticism and he's just putting it into this one box and we've I, I, we it's it hard lost. enough to understand what this fucker's saying because he's <laughs> saying it so fast we did it last I, podcast, I seriously have to go back this this year has been pretty bad for logically consistent storytelling like this year's been awful um, so the idea that it's creeping up now and costing movies their quality is ridiculous and yeah that's the false dichotomy that um just right brought to us which was if you you know you should be focusing on the emotional resonance rather than logical consistency, ignoring the fact that many people get emotional resonance from logical consistency. But yes, we same can sentiment.
Yeah, we'll, we'll see. In additional context that popular culture's current plot hole fixation has reached the point of making films themselves worse by encouraging filmmakers to craft narratives more concerned with responding to or heading off criticism by mechanics obsessed trope fixated YouTube critics rather than. See, I, I don't, I, yeah, I don't buy the idea that if audiences want coherent plots and storylines and, you know, the logical progression of things in a film, I, I don't think that that makes films worse. If anything, it exposes bad writing. I, I I don't I don't buy that. I I don't buy that if if audiences have have higher standards for films, then films get worse. Yeah, I know it's it's again not understanding what plot is. I don't again. I wish I knew he defined his terms of what a plot is and what a a plot hole is. Then we can say okay, now now we know what the audience is learning about because there's all these crazy critics that are looking at plot holes and making it a big deal that uh, suddenly the, the script writer is now going to say, oh, I better start making my, uh, my science fiction story be logically consistent and have all this lore that matches up in the next story. Uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> this is always going to be a good thing. And to, to ne neglect that is to neglect an entire component of the human experience, uh, especially in oral or written tradition. You don't want to just start telling a, a, a mystery story or... Uh, even a, a child's story, a, a horror story, to scare them to going to sleep. You don't want to start uh, screwing up how the, the the magic monster doesn't work anymore. It's like, wait a second, that's you at night at six o'clock. You said five o'clock. Like, you want to know what the hell you're talking about? You have that's to it. keep these memories alive. You can't just start making crap up. And when we go case by case for these things, because they always just blanket it. They're like, oh my god, you're obsessed with all this logical stuff. When let's be honest, if you fixed it all, it would just be. Like, the film would be ruined. And I'm always just like, case by case, you make all these small tweaks. Like, when someone literally just makes the mistake of reading something out wrong in the film, or they say 13, when later they say 21 as, as a recognition of how many things there are in a, in, a, in a thing that matters, you should be like, literally just tweak that back to the, to the, the correct number. Or don't have that reference there, or do this there. Like, tiny things, and then people are just like, yep. no, I've ruined the whole film. And how exactly. strange is it that for two things, one, it's almost as if he's saying he talks so fucking fast. I didn't quite catch it, but I'll rewind it in a second. But I think he refers to YouTube critics as like a like a derogatory term, which is ironic considering Movie Bob is a YouTube critic. Yeah, um, but he focuses on I, the right stuff while we focus on the wrong stuff. Oh, OK. Um, and it's strange that movie critics seem to be the ones who are excusing bad shit in movies the most when you would expect them to be the ones calling it out the most. It's, it's, very, it's like they want these movies to be good, is the vibe that I get. It's like they really want these movies to be good, which is why we get shit like Rhino Milk. Yes. Um. Filmmakers to craft narratives more concerned with responding to or heading off criticism by mechanics-obsessed, trope-fixated YouTube critics rather than delivering a satisfying and lasting experience. Now Oh man, that's, that's so annoying oof. to hear. Rather than delivering a lasting and satisfying experience, as if the you know, do I need to say false dichotomy? It's just like that's it. There you go. I yeah, I'm curious how the Last Jedi is gonna last. You know, in terms of it's um, it's timeless appeal. I just I don't see it. I don't see the timeless appeal in the Last Jedi. <laughs> it might it might be talked about forever. <laughs> If well, in that yeah. way it's timeless, but not for yeah, infamously timeless. We should just throw away all the uh, Sherlock Holmes stories and yeah. Christie novels. Just all the logic. Just poof. No one's going to read these ever again. It's, it's this is what I mean. It's just like way way to just re completely misrepresent the other side. As as if because Movie Bob's got videos I've heard. I haven't seen them. Apparently, in relation to Batman vs Superman, he's got videos where he breaks them down logically. And it's just like, the Just just Right had the same problem, where you just show them their own work, show them that it bothered them, and then they're like, yeah, but that's different, because reasons. And yeah, like, because oh, okay. this didn't have Star Wars on the cover. Yeah. But yeah, sure. Now, uh, for me, apart from... I was just going to say, there's just like that conclusion that um, it doesn't last with you as much if you make it logically consistent, which... Ugh fixated YouTube critics rather than delivering a satisfying and lasting experience. Now, for me, apart from, again, largely agreeing with all of that, the core of the issue does seem to start with the weakening the definition of what a... You see, it's it's the center of the earth. That's the core. I got it. I got it. Also, this editing it. style is giving me an aneurysm. I don't like it either. I hate it. It's like image, 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 image. And, and granted, p people might look at this and say, this isn't... Uh, we're not criticizing this, the substance of his 
his what you could stretch and say arguments, but <laughs> it's just an, it's annoying to look at. It's very is like if I had been doing editing as long as he has been doing editing, I would be like upset with this. I mean, I it's genuinely hard to listen to and to look at. I mean, it's so visually unappealing. And on top of that, the fact that he's speaking at like a thousand words a second. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Well, you yeah. tell me I got to take a breath when I'm in in my own videos and i'm like oh my yeah, god this, I, I can't even follow be, this guy i'm not a fan of his style to edit but his style's nowhere near as bad as his arguments for me <laughs> like I, I get way more distracted by listening to movie bob you're just going like oh my god what now i mean I, like, like i genuinely have a headache after watching only about a minute of this so what's interesting is we watched a video i forget who it was by but they were talking about things, and then on the screen there were there was text of different things. And oh, I oh yeah. uh, um, uh, God, Hello Greedo. Yeah, was Hello I'm, pre Greedo? I'm pretty sure it actually was. I, yeah, because that yeah. was the one where he was like complaining about people uh, hating Star Wars, and then he was like, "Oh, you guys, it doesn't matter if Ray's a Mary Sue or not." And it, it was it's like one of those tests that they give people where they have a word written out in a color, but they say say the color of the word, not what the word says and the words spell colors, things like that. It was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to folk. What am I supposed to listen to you or read to the different texts that you want? You want me to absorb two things at the same time that are different. Um, as I say, movie Bob man and is like, I, I just spent a bunch of money on new art assets and stuff. And I, I got Vegas and I'm learning how to do zooms and scrolls and panning and how timing works and all that stuff. And like improving slowly but surely my, you know, the style and everything. But this is just like, you know, transparent image, transparent image, transparent image. And as fast stop, as he talks, it must be. Stop judging him mechanically. Judge him emotionally from how no, you I'm, feel about the I'm content. I'm judging him based off of the other piece of shit things he does. <laughs> it's just that the the editing is, oh, geez, it's, it's hard to. It's almost like if I close my eyes, it's better. But then I have to see the buttons, so. Largely agreeing with all of that, the core of the issue does seem to start with the weakening the definition of what a plot hole even is, having devolved from this thing that happened does not make any sense to this thing that happened does not make any sense to me. Part See, oh my god. What? Yeah, he's just labeled, if you call something a plot hole, then it's just because it doesn't make sense to you. Well, it's what I mean, Patrick it, Willem it, said, if you remember. Like, he was it's like... It's like the, the Chris Nolan fanboy, you just didn't understand it. Well, remember, Patrick Holmes was like, just because you didn't see Bruce Wayne with no money or resources or contacts get to um, uh, what was essentially a completely guarded Gotham, that's not a plot hole. Montage answers that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It was not a mon. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> this, is, this is what I mean. So he's like, that's not a plot hole. That is an example of you thinking you know what a plot hole means, but you don't. Yeah, and if anything else, all that does is it just kicks the can down the road to it being in a different category of problem. It's like, it's not a plot hole, it's just a different problem. Oh, it's frustrating, because he's not helping the conversation, is he? What he just did there was essentially just throw an insult. Well, he told you what you think. Yeah, people don't know the definition, therefore... Well, even if they don't know the definition, they know something is wrong with what they saw, and they can't articulate it well enough, and... He's being actually mechanical and, and kind of semantic on this point, which is odd because, again, he doesn't believe in those things. But that's fine. Fine. Teach us how we should use the term or use a different term. Great. We're still going to complain. We're still going to have problems. Well, now we can have a better vocabulary. Do you remember when Patrick Williams was like, people don't know what the definition of plot hole is. And then, like, immediately after, he says, this is what it, uh, it means as far as I know, or something like that. He, like, says, this is what it means to me, or something. It was just like, wait. And, but, yeah. Yeah, but even that's then, good. <laughs> but even that's good, because you always define, you define no, your terms. My problem is that he's saying, it's like, other people's definitions are wrong. My source for my definition yeah. is me. It's like, what? And then, and then he says that you can find plot holes in anything I don't exactly know I can, what it is. You can but I, at least I can I can appreciate Patrick Willem at least saying that this is what I think a plot hole is, so that at least we can like peer sure. into his yeah. crazed mind. Yeah, like, I mean, oh, Bob, okay. Bob has failed to do that yet, but maybe maybe he does. Who knows? Maybe. Part of the reason plot hole or movie mistake hunting became popular in the video essay world is because Cinemathons. it feels like an easy shortcut to doing deep and or serious analysis because it lets you do a comprehensive breakdown of a film. Okay, Bob, tell me what deep analysis is. I want to know what this uh, movie mistake hunting is, if it's the same thing, if he's saying one or the other. It's like, okay, 
we can do one or the other just fine. Great. Let's well, do both. Movie mistake hunting is like a super reductive version of criticism. Not to mention, he must, that's not like, he's saying that in quotations, right? Because if he's actually saying, this is hunting mistakes, it would be like, so they're mistakes. Yeah. Like, he must be saying that in quotations because he doesn't consider them actual mistakes. I guess not. Yeah, and again, we, I'm not we, sure. We may as well Bob. give that another listen because, you know. <laughs> Part of the reason plot hole or movie mistake hunting became popular in the video essay world is because it feels like an easy shortcut to doing deep and or serious analysis. Yeah, my, my only question is, tell me what deep analysis is then. Yeah. But we're, we're what just, exactly do you want us to do? He hasn't told us what plot hole is yet either, but we'll just keep uh, adding also, these to the ticket. Are, he's, he's, are you going to be the one to decide what's legitimate criticism and what isn't legitimate criticism, Bob? Are you, I, I know that Bob is the, he's the perfect person he's the perfect authoritarian who would say i'm going to be the one who decides what is and isn't criticism and what is and isn't a plot hole <laughs> not, not mean, to pick at it but this guy he's got the date wrong as well avengers infinity war 2017 oh damn bob gotta get that research done that's a plot hole if if maybe he spent less time looking for transparent jpegs oh someone for, said it in show chat. up on the screen for a third of a second <laughs> So it actually said the, literally that in chat. I feel bad now. Um, anyway. It's because it lets you do a comprehensive breakdown of a film without the hard parts of having to establish a thesis or arrive at a unifying alternate point. A Wait thesis a or a, a unifying thesis. alternate point. Why do we need a thesis to make observations? Yeah, I'm not sure. Again, I'd love him to develop that because... What is, what is he looking for, for us to establish at the beginning in terms of a thesis when judging a movie? That we are here today to define whether or not this was constructed well by the standard of and then provide references? Is that the kind of oh, thing he's looking for, or is he looking for something much I, more simple? Now, I haven't taken a writing class in a long time because, you know, I got a job. But a, isn't a thesis at the beginning that basically makes your position clear from the start. So if you're making a movie criticism, like it almost feels like you shouldn't have one that you should end with something like that. You, you shouldn't, I don't know that um, well, he's, he's treating the video like it's an essay. Like, you, like when I do my plot analyses, I'm not doing an essay format. I'm just saying, this is what happens. This is what happens. And this is what happens during that time. Things could, could have been told well, or told poorly, or told absolutely horribly wrong. That's it. It's just like it's like driving your car. There were potholes on the road, and I hit ten of them, and it was well, really bad. And that's it. Uh, just, just correct me if I'm wrong, because again, I always look for definitions of words just to clarify. But the second definition of thesis, according to Google, is a long essay or dissertation involving personal research written by a candidate for a university degree. Sure. So. Could we extrapolate that literally just writing an essay about a movie is automatically a thesis? A if statement doing or the theory essay is... style. Well, the first is uh, the first definition is a statement or theory that is put forward as a premise to be maintained or proved. So, if my premise so, was the Last Jedi is bad, and then I move on to explain plot holes and other things, and that's that... your thesis. Would be that. The Last Jedi, is, you think? Correct me if I'm wrong, but most videos deconstructing The Last Jedi open with that statement. <laughs> most of them say, <laughs> this film is bad, let me move. So, he's wrong on the thesis part. What was the other, I just want to hear what the other thing was. Because it lets you do a comprehensive breakdown of a film without the hard parts of having to establish a thesis or arrive at a unifying ultimate point. A Wait unifying. a second. Movie, movie Bob does the real work. You don't need to do any of that. All you're doing is watching the or playing the game or listening to the music and going, hey, something feel. I don't even know what is wrong. Something feels wrong. Something doesn't sound right. I, I don't know what the feeling is I'm getting, but there's some inconsistency with what I just experienced. That's all you have to do. I think you what these have... people want to do is they want to try and elevate what they do to this really, really high uh. kind of pedestal. Maybe that's because you, you get, I get that impression from these people. That what they do is some some kind of a some Can, some holy thing, some extremely high refined art form, and I'm not saying it can't be. It's just that they they have to elevate everything they do to this level, even when it makes it seem 
I don't know, pretentious and unnecessary. Speaking of pretentious yeah. and unnecessary, can anyone tell me what a unifying alternate point is? Um, uh, I can Google it. Well, okay, when we, do, when we do critical analysis, the whole point, for me at least, is to find meaning in whatever we're, we're looking at. So we try to find the meaning of a scene, which might be broken, or it might be hidden, and that's the, that's the process we have to develop. We have to go through, we have to read it, we have to watch it, we have to think about it, we have to come back to it. So if there isn't any meaning, we say, hey, you know, here, this, is a, this is a flaccid piece of nothing. That's it. That's the point. That's what we've discovered. If we oh, find true. that there's layers and layers of something that uh, works on a dramatic level, that works on a, uh, a scientific level, logically, whatever, then we're like, wow, look at all this stuff. And we, if we just pay attention and listen, maybe to foreshadowing previously or to the big reveal, we could have seen it coming. We could have experienced it more. We could have appreciated the writer's work more. If there, of course, there's something there to, to uh, deduce. But so if not... He he said he said alternate unifying point unifying alternate point was the order unifying but could, alternate could I suggest point. is he trying to say that you go with the the thesis or premise that last Jedi is bad and then you go through all the elements and you basically start stacking up all the good things like as you progress almost like that's your narrative and then the unifying alternate point would be that the last Jedi is actually great would that be what he means by that. I wish I could say it. I don't know exactly. <laughs> okay. I don't know what the I don't know what he means by alternate unifying unifying. Thing. It, it sounds like he wants to teach a, a course in uh, in short story writing or something like, that. and and it's one of those really weird electives you take at university that no one really wants to go to, and you're like, oh, this guy, he's got some some deep meaning behind. Uh, he's definitely uh, saying words. I'll give him that. He's saying words here. Yeah. Words are being spoken. Um, many of them very quickly. Uh, but I, I don't know what he means. Hence a breakdown of a film without the hard parts of having to establish a thesis or arrive at a unifying ultimate point. Because no, this thing you thought was good actually has several imperfections and therefore you are wrong and it's not good does not count as a point. Why not? Why? But pointing out errors to something that contradict we... your thesis, I don't see why that wouldn't Are we actually going to be arguing over what the definition of a point is now? <laughs> like, really? If someone says The Last Jedi is good in terms of filmmaking and consistent writing, and then I present them all these pieces of evidence and I say, you are wrong, I would have made my point. Is, it's too generic to say what good means. If he can define a scene, or a good composition, or a good, like the purpose of the story is X, and therefore it did X, then you could say, great, okay, it accomplished its goal, it did it in a horribly broken way, but it still accomplished its goal, then sure, it's great. It's a great film. It did exactly what it set out to do. Its premise was maintained. It achieved it. Great. But is that what we're going for? I don't think so. I think we're going for the entire package, looking at the entire experience, and we're seeing any drama, we're seeing any logical, we're seeing any, any uh, uh, enthusiastic aspect that we wanted to see. Like, oh, we, we were waiting to see this fight scene, and it came, and we got it, and we're so satisfied. Is that the subjective thing we're looking for? I don't know. What's he talking about here? And to clarify, Tomorrow, he, he just said that, so you have person A saying the film's great, person B saying, here's evidence, you're wrong, and he and he's saying, that's not a point, and if you think it is, you're wrong. And it's like, well, Movie Bob, did, did you just not make a point? Like, how far does this go? Can we just say nothing is a point now? The more he talks, the more I get the impression that it's just he's trying to set it up as well. When I make the point, then it's this this grandiose, underlying thematic, substantive gobbledygook, whatever you want to call it, and it's deeper and it transcends all of the points that you make. Maybe, maybe. I mean, but that's kind of strange because you don't want to supersede other meaning you've discovered unless it's part of it. It's like it's, it's a secondary aspect of the main component. Also, sign, you say, sign of a great video. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll let you continue. I'll just say sign of a great video that we spend this long figuring out what he's trying to say first. Exactly. I don't... Yeah, a lot of this is interpretation. Like, maybe we're completely wrong because we have no idea what he's saying. Because, like, I still... Like, what is alternative unifying point? <laughs> I don't know.
Yes. I mean, I am genuinely serious when I say that I have a headache and I it's hard for me to even pay attention to this video at this point. Just close your eyes. You want to you wanna keep listening? listening. That's, what I've, that's what I've been doing. I've just had like my head in my hand and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Go get a painkiller. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do you want to just run through it so we don't you don't have to spend so much time analyzing this thing? But there's so much that we don't <laughs> well, that's, know. Have you, that's what we do. <laughs> that's the thing this, we do. This fucking podcast is called Every Frame a Pause. <laughs> because this is what we deal with. Also, I did. I, I did interrupt you, by the way, if you wanted to make a point about uh, before I said that this video makes no sense. By the way, <laughs> let's just keep going. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, imperfections, and therefore you are wrong, and it's not good. Does not count as a point. <laughs> But even easier than that is being able to pad out your list of problems with things that only feel mistaken, logically inconsistent, confusing, or dumb to you, rather than take the due diligence and, frankly, healthy degree of introspection to check and see whether you're... This is so fucking but pretentious. I agree with him, though. But he's he's saying this is a counter to Last Jedi haters, you know? Like, like you know the idea that um, someone says, oh, The Last Jedi sucks because I hated what they did with Han Solo in it? You'd be like, he wasn't in the film. And then you they go, yeah, he was. And you're like, no, you, you've gotten that wrong, right? That's that's great when you actually tell somebody to check their references, as he's implying right here. But oh, the problem is yeah, he's just lumped those people in with people complaining about The Last Jedi as if The Last Jedi yeah. doesn't have problems. It's like he's arguing, oh, our subjective analysis is going to be wrong for whatever reason. So let's find out what he thinks is actually right. But like, Yeah, he's instantly assuming that you're wrong if you take the other position. Well, I suppose so, but... It's almost he he won't give benefit of the doubt and he won't even like entertain the idea. It's it's just this. It's a very it, only in the most broadest sense of what he's saying is it true? But it's very obvious by the way that he's phrasing it and based on what he said previously in this video that he's absolutely looking down on the people who would disagree about this kind of thing. Yeah, and why not provide counter arguments to these references instead of simply saying? Yeah, you guys, you've got it wrong. But, like I said, in concept, I agree with him. If people are saying there are problems where they've simply got bad information, that's fine. My problem is the context in which he's presented this. He's implying that people who look for plot holes typically get it wrong, and that they're not actually plot holes at all, with no references. At least, at least Patrick actually gave references. They were bad references, but he gave they references. They were shit, yeah, but they existed perception is actually correct. But while I'm inclined to agree that the way it encourages us to prioritize plot mechanics and structure over theme and impact is a much more damaging aspect, like, that's where- Impact. See, impact. we're here again. Impact. Implying- well, I, I like the- I liked how he said that we put a uh, plot and whatever uh, above theme. It's like, you have to put it above theme. We yeah. have to have plot first. Yeah. Once you have plot, everything else comes from it. That's yeah. how it works. I would say that if you're making a movie and like if you're a director and you make a movie that has um, solid plot, characters, um, all that good stuff, and you have you you don't think about theme, you have no concept of theme, you don't make the movie uh, intending for people to get a theme from it, people will still get a theme from it. Themes are that malleable. You can they're they're so they're nebulous and out there that even if you don't put a theme in your film, there will be a theme in your film that people will draw from it. Right. And but in this case, he has to define what's so important about theme because if he doesn't do that, we're like, Oh, we should pay attention to theme. Okay, yeah. Bob, what is yeah. that? He's asserted that themes are extremely important. And I'm like, eh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I like me a good theme. I prefer not to invent one. And it's consistent element with like in reference to the plot or the characters to cover up a film's like horrific writing, but there we are. <sighs> this whole thing jumps from obsessive nitpicking for its own sake is shallow to the point of meaningless as an act of film criticism to oh my god, stop it, you are literally murdering the concept of culture. I feel like an under Okay, whoa, what what? What? Let's let's do that again. Because what? <laughs> That's where this whole thing jumps from obsessive nitpicking for its own sake is shallow to the point of meaningless as an act of film criticism to, oh my god, stop it, you are literally murdering the concept of culture. So it goes I... from you nitpick so much that you're actually hurting culture. I don't think those were two extremes. Those were two negative sides. He didn't well, I think that's what he's positive. saying. It starts yeah. as nitpickery yeah, one... and it moves into actual damage to culture. Well, yeah, that well, yeah, that's why 
criticism of Black Panther eventually leads to the white ethno state. Not to mention, since Cinema Sins, culture has just taken a dive. Cinema Sins ruined everything. We used to have good movies, but now we only have movies that pay attention to logical consistency. <laughs> That's a thing Darn, that happened. Darn, curse you, Cinema Sins, for doing that. How awful of you. I can't, it, like... I wonder if you'll qualify this, because that is a crazy statement, but again, movie bobs, so... <laughs> oh my god, stop it, you are literally murdering the concept of culture. I feel like an under-discussed aspect is also how the otherwise neutrally malnutritious fact... I'm, I'm, I'm already gonna have what to... What are you gonna I'm say? Gonna have to, I'm already gonna have to listen to that again. Yeah, I, I didn't sorry. follow that at all. He just speaks oh. so fast and jumps through, from one thing to another so quickly, it's... It's borderline impossible He's to follow making it this video. Impossible for us to like. We have to turn his video from nine minutes into something just to hear him. Yeah, this is nine minutes of video, but it's like forty minutes of actual gobbledygook that he's spewing. So let's let's see if we can derive some meaning. From oh my this. God! Oh my I, God! I stop hate it! You Patrick are literally. Williams, but I, I'll at least say thanks for being Clear. relatively. Yeah, it, thanks for it, speaking like a normal human being. And the style for, the style is easy on the eyes for the most part, Patrick Willems. Yeah, thanks for at least almost being coherent. <laughs> anyway. No criticism to, oh my god, stop it, you are literally murdering the concept of culture. I Neutrally malnutritious Oh wait, I didn't of, hear it. Let me play it one more okay. time. Okay, murdering let's, the let's concept of culture. I feel culture. I feel like an underdiscussed aspect is also how the otherwise neutrally malnutritious fact of plot hole recitation masquerading as substantive critique gets weaponized to make the subjective opinion. Fuck, dude, no. I okay, so what he's I, saying is that he doesn't like people who point out plot holes. That's all he's saying. <laughs> that's basically, all he's saying. Yeah, that's that's basically yeah. He's saying that it, pointing out plot holes is essentially like. Um, it's a, it's a cheap way to subjectively say you don't like something, even if you can objectively point out an objective error with the film. Yeah, there's no for value which, to For that. which those exist, everyone, by the way. I have never seen such a ridiculous example of word salad in my <laughs> life. I mean, I wow. legit, legit did not understand it. I, and I've listened to it three times now. This is insane. It's so unnecessarily like a... bombastic and and quick for no reason aside from he, he wants it's to be. It's like quick. if you compare all the nonsense uh, uh, allegories from a Razor Fist video with just some rambling bullshit from a Jordan Peterson video, <laughs> and then it, amplified it by like hundred and fifty, and you it, get it is it is over extravagantly loquacious. I see what you did there, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> I like, just is also talk like a normal otherwise... person. It's insane. Talk like a normal person to people. Just what, people what just want to simple concepts. Well, even complex compass. Explain it in the simple terms, man. Why do you need these crazy words and then say well, them really fast? Because he, he he never actually took a creative writing course. So, uh, well, yeah. that's just creative writing is just fucking nitpick or something. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like an underdiscussed aspect is also how the otherwise neutrally malnutritious fact of plot hole recitation masquerading as substantive critique gets weaponized to make the subjective opinion sound like objective fact. For good or ill- Okay, with that ending bit, I'm just gonna take that as people have feelings and they use plot holes to define their feelings as factual experiences for everybody. And I'm not concerned with the way they feel about them so much as is the plot hole that they mentioned a plot hole? Exactly. That's, yeah, that's usually, it, me and, all of our work is usually, can you just accept that it exists? I don't care how you feel about it. Yes. Yeah, that's, can, that's not how the plot works, unfortunately. Yeah, essentially, if you, we can both agree that a plot hole exists in the film, it's okay if you like the film. But can we agree that the thing we're pointing out, this, the, this thing in the film that we can both point to at, you know, X, X times such character does such or event happens. And we at least agree on that. And you can like it if you want, but let's just come to agreement that the thing, you know, is what it is. Yeah. And, <sighs> and this is the thing. Um, I would partially actually use what, what he just said. I would use as an argument against people like just right. 
I would say that they really enjoyed the film and so they've invented or, or completely shifted the narrative or the, the reality of the film in order to argue that it's got an uh, like an incredible construction. So they're arguing their feelings as factual information on screen, which they've lied about. But you can you don't need to just say it. You can actually show it. You can go, okay, so just right when you when you reference the Holdo scene and then you talk to him and then you can see what happens. You don't have to just say that they're wrong. You can actually show that they're wrong. It makes it have more substance. But obviously, when you're speaking this fast, I don't think you can shove anybody else's references in here alongside it. It would just be chaos. Oh dear. Good or ill, the overriding concern here is, after all, less movie reviews, video essays, criticism, whatever, as entities in and of themselves than their function as rhetorical ammunition in debate and discussion. I fail to understand. Worth remembering is that nerd culture emerges from the field of academia, engineering, technology, mathematics, the hard sciences, etc. I'll say this, though. Donald Duck in Mathematical Land was amazing. For those of you who haven't seen it. Did you it's know that nerd all culture involves math and science and technology, but cartoons and colors and shapes and visual cues and audio cues. No, it's all, all the sciences, all the stem cells. I guess we'll find out. In debate and discussion. I fail to understand. Worth remembering is that nerd culture emerges from the field of academia, engineering, technology, mathematics, the hard sciences, etc., where academic debates have clear parameters and empirical conclusions, and geek culture is, when you get right down to it, uh, nerdiness it? but for fake things. Oh, come, give me a break. Come on. So what there's, the there's no talking? standards, there's no empirical uh, data in any way for scripts, writing, anything. Yeah. Nerds are X, geeks are Y. Are you giving me a... Is this crap? Come on. <laughs> he's saying he's saying that he's a nerd and he's super intelligent and smart because his kind of geeker nerdery, he, it's the same thing. But when he does it, it's it's nerdery. So yeah, it comes he, from mathematics and the hard sciences. But when other people do it, it's geekery, th this which is, is different. Next level levels of how great I am because I'm not from Group A, and Group B is this. The fucking post hoc shit people do for the fucking Last Jedi is insane. <laughs> He's been it doing this well before insane. the Last Jedi, I think, but you are right, though. Probably. It just brings it to the surface. Oh, my God. ...understood that no matter how serious you could get yourself to take it, the fact that there couldn't ever actually be a true empirical conclusion to debates like is Superman stronger than Captain Marvel or Picard versus Kirk was... What? It, they could part of the be. Plot. It depends on what information yeah, we have. Be. Yeah. You can, me I mean, like, I know it sounds a little, like, anal, but you can measure force. Force is a thing that can be scientifically measured, so the one or the other is, we do that. Well, well, you, you're time, referring he's... to midichlorians. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Everything for cooking for card, I mean, are, I'm sure arguments can be made depending on the scenario, uh, but it's just, like, those are, wow. Those are... What do you think oof. happens when you do these things? Like, you go, Wolverine versus uh, Hawkeye. You go, well, Wolverine, because anything Hawkeye does won't be permanent. And, well, uh, th this discussion he just brought up, I mean, yeah, you can talk about that. There's a channel called the character battles between each other, and they, they look at the math and the science and the, the believability of it. Hmm. But this is a total non sequitur. He's just rambling on topic. Like, I feel why, like this is non sequitur the video. Well, yeah, I'm not sure how this assists his point, really, but um, I suppose the overall point is that you cannot uh, distill media or art down to a scientific level like you can with science, math, whatever else. So now is objective criteria bad, or I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Is it good or bad? I, well, I guess that's the, the thing. Nerds. He did highlight that it's possible, but now he's kind of saying that you can't do it really. He chose odd examples, like, is one character better than another? You know, what, is, what do you mean by better in what sense? But, uh, I mean, you, it's just, it's a different thing to say, can you find out objectively if this is a plot hole or not? Which, generally, you probably can. And is Kirk or, or, is Kirk or Picard better? Like, those are two comparable things that you could reach a conclusion with using the same thought process. And yeah, I'm curious, it's like, what, in a fist fight or in a logical debate on what should be done about X, Y, and Z? Like, yeah. I don't like it, because listening to him, it makes me feel like, what, are you saying that the conversation should just start and end the moment you bring it up? You'd be like, well, there's no way to know, so give it up. It's like, well, we do have actual 
things to reference here. We have facts about them. We have we have events, choices they've made. These are things that happened. They are definitive. What he's implying is like no. This this is about as much substance in that as deciding whether or not a, 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 a ghost would win in a battle with a vampire. It's like, uh... <sighs> Very never actually strange. be a true empirical conclusion to debates like is Superman stronger than Captain Marvel or Picard versus Kirk was part of the fun of doing it. It is Kirk, though. It's Kirk. James Tiberius Kirk. It Wait, is it, he's saying the fact that you can't get an answer is why it's, it's fun. I, I, I think it's, it's the process is fun. I, yeah, I, I would agree with that, but uh, there's several examples where you can get a conclusion. Like I said, there are just some that are just definitively like, oh, well, yeah, that person would win with w what we know, facts-wise. I suppose we'll never know empirically because we can't have them battle in real life. Is that his point? Uh, I mean, it depends. Um, you would have to, assuming that you can have uh, uh, true-false premises, then maybe that's the case. Uh, like, if if there was, like, in canon, objective measurements of strength or something like that, then you could use those and come to a conclusion, but... Yeah, if he's trying to argue that lore is bad and focusing on all the details is bad because you're not focusing on... I can see where he might be going, but uh, there's nothing wrong with what would, who would win in a battle. What would, what would happen if these two starships from different lore came together? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with experimenting and having fun with with culture that you've you've had in your childhood. He's not saying there's anything wrong with it. He's saying you can't get a, an empirical answer. So what? And yeah, and the thing is, like, there is a right answer, but whether or not you can reach it, yeah, we, that's a different thing. We need we'd need more information in the in the scenario where we couldn't get the answer. For example, like yes. you know, what's stronger, vibranium or adamantium? It's like, well, we need to ask the writers if there's no reference or look at what they can do and what their limits are and you'd be like there is no answer to that empirically it's like well no there would be if we had the information we need to get the empirical answer yeah, from the because universe. there is an answer one like, of them is, they're not exactly the same imagine there's just a scientist in one of the movies who says vibranium i've never heard of it i've only worked with adamantium and then they go oh it's twice as strong as adamantium then we have our answer because that that's officially a rule now because a scientist said it in the universe meaning they would have researched it. The, do you get what no, I mean? No, because the scientists had a moment of weakness. I don't know if this is kind of like an argument for it, it's not empirical in our universe because it's fictional but you can get an empirical answer from the fiction if that makes sense. Like its own context. Well, yeah, it's, it, yeah it's, a, it's a true false premise. It's basically if you take a fictional world there are true things that exist within an, a fictional premises. You follow that smug boy or you, have you got any different kind of take on it? Uh, I want to know where he's going with it first off, because he sounds as if it's it, this is impossible to achieve. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's not impossible if you read all the lore or you have yeah. access to all the lore. But I want to know where he's going with this, because what's his point? Behind doing saying, it. It is Kirk, though. It's Kirk. James Tiberius Kirk. It just is. But now it feels like a growing segment of geek culture okay. believes or wants to make itself believe that subjective opinion on art, entertainment, fiction, etc. can be empirically settled with a correct answer if only the almighty algorithm can be supplied with enough hard data and thus suppose. But yes. the de definition defeats itself <laughs> if it's subjective. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say started... the false premise there is like you can prove your subjective thing to be f factual. It's like but they're two different things. Yeah, but yeah, then it's not, not subjective. We're not trying to argue from a subjective ob object of uh, perspective we are starting with objective observation and we're saying this is what's going on right now i'm seeing it i'm hearing it and then this th the next scene this is what's going on that's all we're doing and then we're taking a step back and going, wait a second why did that happen that's not what the guy wanted to do in the first part of the movie he wanted to go to x why is he going to y that's a plot hole that's exactly what we we, we observe it. and then he comes back with you're just arguing your feelings and you'd be like that's not my feelings well, I mean, I guess I could feel it, but it's also true. <laughs> like, yes. Well, no, he, he's Your already from the perspective of the lore. objectively true, yeah. Because he was, he, this whole spiel on, on how you can never know enough to know what is, you know, Kirk versus Spock or whatever. Like, okay, well, yes, you can. And it's all observable. And it's not our opinion. That's just what the lore is telling us. This is what the fiction is telling us. So what's your argument? It, it's not possible? We know it's possible. It's not our, it's not our subjective interpretation. We're listening to the damn freaking movie. It's what they. It's what the movie told us. It's not what yeah, we're yes. making up. 
and our subjective opinions can reflect an objective truth. Exactly. Yeah, like it's I, just not true because we think it is. It's just we we have the correct, basically the correct opinion about something that's objectively true. I think that's that's actually tied to where all this confusion comes from. The idea that you could never feel something that's definitively a fact, like because it's important. Because basically, like you know, you you know, I don't need to tell you that I feel like water is wet. You'd be like, yeah, hey, water isn't wet. First off, but um. <laughs> Here, here's a good, here's a good explanation. All right, I feel that two plus two equals four, but it's not true because I feel it. Those things just happen to both align together. Yeah, and when right. we present it to him in an argument, we don't say, we don't start with "I felt that character should have gone to X" uh, because they said they were going to X. We go, "Character said they were going to X," and then they went to Y. Respond to this, please. And then they go, "That's just how you feel." You go, "That's I haven't presented my feelings." Yes, I haven't told you how I felt. Yeah, I could feel that that's the case. I could feel completely differently. I'm asking you to respond. Yeah. Like, I could have no problem with this personally. That's actually, yeah, that's something that a lot of people miss. Is like half the, well, not half, uh, half the tiny complaints that Mio Wolf may have in movies. They have no idea whether or not it actually bothers the shit out of us or not. It's just stuff that we can pick up. We could be like, oh, this is something that they made a mistake with. This is something they made a mistake with. Yeah, and that adds up. Yeah, and you might not have noticed it, but your brain did. And displaying the fact that it happened does not tell you what we felt about it definitively, unless we say it. I suppose that's it's all about communication. I suppose you know, defining your terms and then letting people know the differences, or you could just say a bunch of things in a row and hope that the audience can pick it up for themselves. I suppose. Supposedly empirical data points like X number of plot holes or over in the land of video games, polygon counts, rendering speeds, CPU schematics, etc. are granted outsized credence over the macro questions of overall experience and how did the story- How can- that's two different conversations though. Yeah, those are two- those are two He is- he is just saying a lot of stuff right now that do well, not- oh, There are words. He, there well, are he said like, words. you go, let's, let's say for example someone's like, let me report on the technological achievements of the PS4 and Spider-Man, the new game that came out on it. And they talk about the graphics, the um, the the port, if it, if it was one. Let's say it was originally a PC game or something, it got ported. And he's, he's talking about the the optimization. Then it, then it goes through all the different features you've got for um, controls, all this objective stuff. And then he says right at the end, to be honest, guys, you know, I played it and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was a great representation of what's in the comics. I, I really enjoyed myself. And to be honest, I think I'll be playing this game through again. It's like, you know, there's a switch between I displayed all these facts for you and now I'm going to talk about how it made me feel. And he's just treated it as if, like, you choose one and and, and you diminish and the other. And that doesn't mean they can't interact in any way. It's just that they're kind of two different conversations. Uh, like, you can say Spider-Man runs at 30 FPS. This, you know, objectively you could say, I don't, I don't know if it, I assume it is because it's on a fucking console. But... Um, let's say Spider-Man runs at 30 frames per second. So if I was to play that game, that would bug me, and that would take away my enjoyment. So you can have two things that are parallel, but they're different. It's objective that the game runs at 30 FPS. It is subjective that it bothered me. Well, it's objective that it did bother me, but that's, you know, how I felt about it. Then that gets into two different things, too, but... <laughs> you see the point I'm getting? Yeah, it is. I just feel like he's blending them by design here. Like, like he wants to blend them just to make this more confusing. It is a strange tone, way he's combined them. ...etc. are granted outsized credence over the macro questions. But that's the key point. He says they're granted outside credence. They're like, granted outside credence. The technical well, the, stuff is granted outside credence to the, the experience. The experience the audience has is always going to be subjective. Exactly. But you can observe that these things are objective, but we're, we're talking about apples and oranges here. So I don't well, know why he's bothering. He says it like credence. But that's the thing. He said it like it's wrong. If I'm to get this right, I haven't checked the words yet. Granting outside credence, as in something has relevance outside of experience, or is that what he's trying? Because I, I would say that's true. The objective stuff is the stuff that we can all see here and understand and talk about. That's what he means. While the subjective stuff is, you know, all four of us would have reacted differently to the Last Jedi. It would have been very close probably but it would have all been different if you could scale emotions we'd all be completely well, different well let's imagine that this this new spider-man film has you know, polygon count for the character uh 10 frames per second you know 32 bit graphics palette you know very low low tech stuff would that 
lose the immersion? I don't think so. If the whole world is presented that way and we believe in the world, who cares what it looks like realistically or believably or photorealistically? That's the experience we wanted. That's what we got as we're watching through. We're still watching through it. We, put, we play to the end. We've had this experience. We, we can play with that willing suspension of disbelief in our head just fine, regardless of the technical achievement of the game. It's Some people, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things where if you say, hey, this game runs at 10 frames per second, and that's objective, and some people can say, I'm fine with that, and most people would probably say that's this is unplayable. I can't I can't play this game like that. But those are two different things that are running side by side to each other. Yeah. And the key is being able to identify one. You yeah. know, Does it pull you out of the experience? Yes or no? Do, yeah, do, and that's for everybody to say, isn't it? Sure. They they can all everyone has a different reaction because he said granted outside credence. To me, I'm just like it should be. They're separate things. You can obviously say that um, the reason you felt bored in Canto Bite was because you weren't interested in any of the things that were going on there. Like that, that you know, you explain, you try to explain your feelings with, with as many facts as you can gather to try and correlate. But again, there's still just, there's a line drawn between the things that actually happen and are there versus how you felt about them. And outside credence, I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to say there, but yes, they should be separated because they are separate. Simple as that of overall experience and how did the story tone aesthetic affect you on an emotional or visceral level and that awkwardly askew prioritizing leaves a lot of room open for plot hole dumps being that? at least ostensibly lists of matter of fact did you no know? feelings no, are for sjw's he he tried to tie in some sort of subjective interpretation then to to say that because it's subjective and then we throw in our interpretation of what, what a plot hole is or making observations of plot hole that this is somehow bad? Like, what, what do you... Like... Also, as Rags just said, feelings are for SJWs. Like, I, I that's, a, that's a pretty <laughs> Titanic straw man movie, Bob. I I've, never, I've, never, I've never heard any anti-SJW say you like, shouldn't feel things. Do we... How do we respond to that one? <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, we value feelings, sir. I, I, I can assure you feelings are important. Yeah, uh, it's very strange. Uh, Oh, oof. Honestly, that was a visceral. lot of gibberish. Yes. And we should yeah. just keep going. Yeah. Rendering speed, CPU schematics, etc. are granted outsized credence over the macro questions of overall experience and how did the story tone aesthetic affect you on an emotional or visceral level. And that awkwardly askew prioritizing leaves a lot of room open for plot hole dumps being at least ostensibly lists of matter of fact observation to be undeservedly held up as determinant of a work being seriously flawed for want of more substantial criticism. Said okay. Okay. Oh, oh, it's... it's no, now it makes sense. Now he's saying, you know, there's this whole wonderful emotional experience, but then there's also this this mental, logical, observational experience, and that th they're they're in conflict with each other, and we can't have. It's like okay, it's like if I, if they if they're in conflict to you, I guess. Um, yeah. But man, that's that's fucking that's a shame, man. I'm like, all right, but man, that what a fucking shame. Yeah, it's like it's like Patrick just lost his left hemisphere again. It's the same <laughs> condition. It's like, oh, pff, logic? What's that? I don't yeah. want logic in my stories. Why, why yeah, would you I, do that? Yeah, I hate this idea that logic is the enemy to emotion. It's like... Yeah, man. To me, they go hand that. in hand so well. Because, logic? Like, man, I, I, watched, um, I watched The Witch um, earlier this week, and I really, really liked it in part because of how, like, logically the characters behave within their own, you know, worldview, right? Like, what they were doing was logical to them. And so yeah. that really helped to draw me into the story, and I enjoyed it a lot more because of that. If they were doing things that, to themselves at least, made absolutely no sense, then it would, it would really, really take away from the story, especially because it's basically, here are characters, plot occurs. Um, but man, I feel so... I feel maybe genuine pity for people who think that logic is the enemy of yeah. I don't know, well, media they, they don't or... understand what plot actually is. If I could put it in a different way, think of plot as feeling with logic. It's like I want something, I want to do something, I want to achieve something, and I'm going to go and get that thing. Now that thing you can call X. I'm going to go from A to X. That's a logical association. A implies X, or A implies going to X. 
That's it. That's the plot. That's that's as simple as it can get. A plot and is what you, a plot is what ought to happen. Uh, the goal of a plot is what ought to happen. Yes, but the the actual plot is just basically desire. What it's your emotion for something to do something, whatever. It's motivation, and logic just says, "Oh, the, the character wanted to pick a flower. Why isn't he picking flowers? Why is he running around the house?" Like. There has to be some correlation like, between just just a random example. Like somebody hits you, you get angry. That's logical. There's a logical progression of events there. Just because it's yeah. emotional as a reaction doesn't mean now that logic has to be flown out the window. Like no, that makes sense. Yeah, you have a you have a plan or a goal or a thing. Yeah, it's logical plot. that people have emotional responses to things. Uh, and again, they just they get completely like separated into. You can have one or the other. You cannot have both. Or that one takes away from the other. It's just, it's just nonsense. You want to prove that a movie you hate is objectively the worst thing ever, but you don't want to sweat having to put your own subjective opinion thereof up for scrutiny. I've never heard a big that. What is he talking about? Uh, he's I'm just, I've he's never, just separated it himself. Just... What does he think objective means? This is objectively the worst movie ever. It's like Maybe he thinks people are... I've, I've only heard people say that jokingly. Yeah. Well, I will say this. This is objectively <laughs> giving me a headache to the point that I think I am going to call it a night because I am just actually just not feeling very well right now. It's okay, okay. man. I think it's actually amusing that <laughs> Movie Bob <laughs> killed you. <laughs> Movie Bob actually broke me to the point where it's like, oh my god, I just want to die listening to this video. I could take Patrick Willems. I can't take Movie Bob. That's all right, man. Look after your look after your brain, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you again sometime. Ha have a fun, fun night, everyone. I hope you. <laughs> <Rip. don't... laughs> I'm gonna have to yeah. beat off pretty hard after this. <laughs> <sighs> Can I join you? No. Oh. I think this is something. Feelings. This I think this is something that I need to undo on my own. Okay. Well, in that case, maybe later. I will see you guys. Well, we do this next week, so mm -hmm. I'll see you guys next week. All right, man. We we could sixty nine after the next downward thrust video we do. Uh, sounds like a good idea. Yeah, sounds great. You're just, just gonna make the audience go nuts. They're gonna be drawing things, sending you on Twitter. You guys just uh, ask they, for it. They already point. have. They already have. <laughs> All right. It, well, I'll I'll yeah. I'll see you next week or whatever, Wolf. Yeah. It's good meeting you, Smud. You too, sir. All right. See you guys. Toodles. Okay. You can go now. There we go. Right. <laughs> it's like, well, fucking right. leave. Get out of here. Piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I get what he's saying. The, the 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 feeling he gets. Like, this is like static. It, it's like video essay static. Well, this, this might be... We've never had to pause this much. Like, this is almost like perfectly taking the name of the podcast because... He he crams nonsense into like finite pieces because very, very my dense. my take on what we just heard was him basically saying people try to prove that something is objectively bad with like facts and logic and stuff while trying to ignore the fact that their subjective opinion is is obviously something that they don't want to have on screen because it'll be scrutinized as in. I like, like if I said, The Last Jedi is the fucking worst thing to ever happen to cinema, and then I'm like, ooh, I better not say that. What I'll say instead is that The Last Jedi has all these plot holes, and I'll, la I'll label them, and then I'll say, you see, objectively, it is the worst thing to happen to cinema. And there I'm, I thought, I'm satisfied. I thought, he, I thought he interpreted it as, as you saying that is not objective, but your subjective interpretation of why it's bad. God, I hope he's was, not saying that. <laughs> I think that's what he's saying. <laughs> let's let's, give, know, it, let's it, give it another listen, shall well, we? The fact that this is like a video essay, whatever, and people are drawing multiple conclusions based on what's in it, like it's the fucking Bible or some <laughs> shit, is really kind of weird. Like, you should be concise and clear, not, you know, overly verbose and. Um, oh, I just, I love the idea that with everything we say. give a description of what we think it is, and then someone else goes, no, it's this. And then someone probably in chat would be like, no, it's this. And it's like, guys, this is not a good thing that's happening. <laughs> this, this shouldn't be this difficult.
of more substantial criticism. Said more plainly, if you want to prove that a movie you hate is objectively the worst thing ever, but you don't want to sweat having to put your own subjective opinion thereof up for scrutiny, a big pile of plot holes, real or perceived, will do nicely, even when taking well, this very shortcut ends up- I'm stuck at the point of, you said you wouldn't want your subjective perspective, like, scrutinized, but it's like, you can't even scrutinize a subjective perspective if it's entirely emotional based. Yeah. Like, if I said to you, I despise this film, it, it annoys me to no end, and then someone says, like, that's wrong. <laughs> like, what are they going to do? And maybe he's confusing the subjective takeaway with the objective data. That's the thing. I, I don't know. I don't know what he's saying. We shouldn't have to try and find out what you're saying, movie Bob. Like, maybe that's why after I, I 10 hate years to keep plus referencing... or whatever on the internet. I hate to no keep referencing wants. Patrick Willems as being a superior essayist, but <laughs> I can understand what Patrick Willems was saying. It was bad, yeah. but it made more sense. <laughs> Patrick is just a child, but Movie Bob is a child trying not to be one. Well, he's, I, try, he's a child acting like an adult, it's as, trying to. It's as many of, including us, and, and I think Chav said, it's just like he swallowed a thesaurus and he's just vomiting up random words all in a row and just like, oh god want to sweat having to put your own subjective opinion thereof up for scrutiny, a big pile of plot holes, real or perceived, will do nicely, even when taking this very shortcut ends up exposed. Well, hang on, he said real or perceived, as in you can have actual definitive plot holes, meaning objective, yeah. objective flaws. Surely that's what yeah. he would say they are, right? Yeah, because they're real. He's like, he said real plot holes. And if you can have objective flaws, you can have an objective assessment. I'm not saying what would be in this objective sentence, but as long as he agrees it exists, then it I mean, exists. He said it does. I mean, maybe That's... he maybe he didn't think that. Maybe he thought more words was better than <laughs> uh, just fewer concise ones. But he seems to one of the few clear things to me in this fucking video it's, it's is it's that progress. he agrees on it's, it's objective, hope. you know issues in films that can be raised. <laughs> so I just, I just caught a comment that says, it's very easy, listen to the entire sentence, that's how language works. I'm not sure if that person's actually defending that Movie Bob actually creates sentences, because these, these feel like run on... Stream of consciousness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you've plugged in his brain, it's just gone... <laughs> uh, We'll, we'll, we'll have Criticism a said more plainly, if you want to prove that a movie you hate is objectively the worst thing ever, but you don't want to sweat having to put your own subjective opinion thereof up for scrutiny, a big pile of plot holes, real or perceived, will do nicely, even when taking this very shortcut ends up exposing the reason why successful narratives generally prioritize theme and aesthetic above logic and structure, namely that human thinking is not do logical they? by default. No, it's, uh, yeah, they I don't. don't. I don't think that's true at all. I don't that's think that's true at all either. the opposite of the truth, yeah. Yeah. You need to, especially in science fiction or space opera, logic has to be the number one quality uh, in terms of keeping the, the story consistent and, and believable. So if you don't have rock solid logic of the lore, of the character motivations, of uh, the science and tech or physicism or fantasy, whatever it is, your story falls apart. So um, it's when it's solid, you are then allowed to have the drama hit very highs, have the melodrama work well, as opposed to having uh, unbelievable settings and unbelievable situations. So, yeah, what he just said was the exact opposite. Yeah, think of, uh, think of a film like you're watching a football game. If there are no rules, then the game will suck. But if there are rules that everyone you know, abides by and follows, then the game is enjoyable. And just, if people break the rules, which is essentially what, what a plot hole can be compared to, where you have an established, you know, have established criteria and you part with that and you break it, then, you know, that affects how the game is played. Now, he could be talking about uh, auteur theory or how he, the cinema from the perspective of the, okay, I'm going to make a film and I'm going to make a film piece. This is more of the um, avant garde style of cinema making, which you see in a lot of French. Uh, film shows, uh, or, or sorry, film festivals. So maybe he's going for the effect, the the context of things as opposed to the content actually having problems, which, um, you know, it, you're doing context over clarity. I could see that as possibly being an argument that could work in the context of cinema, not in the context of storytelling. The fact that you have to say all of that after he says like one sentence, <laughs> like... We we really have no idea what's going on.
Taking this Ugh. very shortcut ends up exposing the reason why successful narratives generally prioritize theme and aesthetic above logic and structure, namely that human thinking is Also, success in what sense? Success in telling a story or success in making money? Yeah, is he saying that the most successful movies are just illogical? Well, obviously, if you're focusing on drama, it'll be... So, I guess, you know... I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't put it past them, though. <laughs> if you use more ice in your drink... It'd... I mean, like, we just watched a video of a guy, and that was his criteria. It was basically, it made money, so therefore it's quality. Mm. Yeah, the shortcut the, ends yeah. up exposing... No, I just agree. <laughs> the reason why successful narratives generally prioritize theme and aesthetic above logic and structure, namely that human thinking is not logical by default in reality, and thus no one living in a... Uh, yes, it is. There you uh, go. Yeah, it is. That's the, that's the Patrick the Willems point that he's echoed. Uh, human beings are logical. We're not perfect, obviously, but we, we do operate logically. Yeah, yeah, I feel like there's this difference between irrational and illogical, as in we do a thing that to the outside world, it's like, why would you do that? But then we have our own logic well, in the I'll, head that functions. Yeah, I'll um, I'll use the witch as an example again. We see, um, for those of you who don't know, it's a story about a bunch of basically very, you know, a bunch of Puritans, um, and they're super, super religious, and they see the world through that lens in almost every aspect. To them, that is logical. To us, it is not. Like everything they do is through the context of, you know, the Bible and God and, you know, Satan and salvation. That's how they view the world. And so as a result, all of their actions logically are in step with that. But to us as an outside observer, they are not behaving logically to us. But those characters think take, that they are. Take the so Joker, for example. He actually explains his crazy logic in The Dark Knight. He has logic. It's just that uh, it's, well, you, I guess you could call it broken. It's the same for Thanos. He explains himself. He has his logical progression of, I do this because of this, this, this. And you can, you can draw, like, emotional events or, or, or uh, experiences that, that color this, these decisions that, that have given them this sense of logic. It's like bad information. For example, that planet that got saved because Thanos culled half of the people on it. He's like, therefore... Culling half of the universe will save the universe. It's like that's not that's bad information that that just doesn't follow, but you you think it does. Yeah, but to him it does, and so he thinks he's acting logically. So when we see him doing things, we're like, okay, he's following his internal logic. Like it, this is the thing; it's so much more interesting than he's making it sound. There's so well, much yeah, more to explore. Not like that, but we're talking about basic Aristotelian logic. We're not talking about. Everything kind of flavor uh, of science that we've used logic in, uh, physics, um, you know, it, it's a very mundane sort of interpretation of logic uh, and what we go through mentally in our day-to-day. -day. Mm. So uh, people are complicated. They're not one or the other. <laughs> exactly human society is operating in a logical world to begin with. For example, I'm old enough to remember when the main place you'd see epic lists of plot holes was the IMDB message boards, May They Burn in Hell, where for a very long time the longest mistakes list was for Titanic, and you know the reason why had very little to do with it having more mistakes than other movies its size and everything to do with it being a popular movie that a lot of people didn't like the omnipresent popular this is irrelevant. Yeah, wow. plus, plus you're, you're assuming the intentions of people on the internet yeah, back like, in whatever year you're talking about. We don't so. even need to define whether or not he's accurate here because it has no relevance to his point. People talked yeah. about Titanic. IMDb used to be a haven for listing plot holes. Okay. Okay to both of those. They don't mean anything. Do you, like, do you think that... Let's take it back. Old school. Shakespeare, man. Like, his also, plays make sense. As someone just sort of mentioned in the chat, it's like, what does he mean that he's so old that he went to IMDb to look at, like, movie stuff? Like, like facts about movies? Like, I used to do that, and I'm not... I'm, I'm 24. Like, I don't... I'm not that old. <laughs> I mean, I mean, his... I mean, his, the, the video title is Butthole Surfer's Reference. So, I... I don't know. It's... Uh, this point doesn't make sense all that much, really. I mean, if if people it's want a good like, assessment of Titanic, by the way, watch watch Plinkett deconstruct it. He does a really good job. It's genuinely a fun video because it made me rethink how I thought of Titanic, and he does a very fair assessment of like the good parts and the bad parts of Titanic. And if if that was a result of having read the lists on IMDb, 
so be it. You yeah, know, like, it doesn't change. It doesn't change where you where they said it and how angrily they say it does not change what they are saying. But yeah, that's uh, I whatever he can continue. This is fine popularity of after a while and being able to rattle off a giant list of structure issues was a good way to dunk on Titan. Why does he say that? Like, oh yeah, wow, with the quotes. Structure so issues, it's like you've are already- Are there no- Are there none? Well, he already admitted that there are both real and not real issues, so... <laughs> are these the fake ones, Movie Bob, or are these the real ones that you're talking about? I just... Whatever, we'll let him continue. A popular movie that a lot of people didn't like the omnipresent popularity of after a while, and being able to rattle off a giant list of structure issues was a good way to dunk on Titanic fans while sounding like you were simply a more sharp-eyed, discerning connoisseur of film. Than so there you go, that's that's what this all comes down to. He's assuming that the intention of people like us is to, de like, to, to purport that our feelings were the correct results because of the facts at hand. And... And this is coming from Movie Bob, who gave a shout out to the guy who said unironically, "You're watching movies the wrong way." Yeah, Ugh. I think that, that about sums it up, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, the, the irony is palpable, of course. But um, uh, I was going to say something about this, probably related to Titanic. Um, then I think I got lost in thought. And again, just uh, just to account for this, um. Someone in chat said, you've completely lost track of what he's saying and pausing to analyze half sentences isn't helping. That's not what we're doing. No, we are not losing track. We are attempting to find out what he is saying. And like, I think like, I've... We're grabbing full sentences, so... Yeah, man. It's because, it, it's because it takes him a frame to make a full sentence. Like he's spitting out words, man, like a machine gun. Um, yeah, so... ...than they were, rather than, uh, I'm so tired of hearing about the boat movie. God, it was such a... Well, also, it makes sense that they would criticize really popular films, because if you talk about films that people haven't seen, then, I mean, they're just gonna have well, to take your word for everything. I find and... that, um, if you want to approach a topic about writing in general, then, you know, the, the, the movie that you take, say, for example, you could do in movies, then just, just take one that the mainstream understand or have at least seen, then they'll be able to join the conversation. I, I I suppose that's a less nefarious way of looking at it because it has to be nefarious, right? I guess. I mean, like he he started off by assuming the intentions of people on IMDb back in 1997. So, and yeah, and by All the right. way, like I'm sure many people in chat can understand this. Like, it's pretty hard to to do this video in general, like, because he says so much stuff so quickly, like, he's, like, got three points in one sentence, so it's like, we rewind, we keep rewinding, surely that's evidence that we're trying to find out exactly what he's trying to say. I, th I think, I think, anyway. News ...was a good way to dunk on Titanic fans while sounding like you were simply a more sharp-eyed, discerning connoisseur of film than they were, rather than, uh, I'm so tired of hearing about the boat movie. God, it was such a chick yeah, flip, right? Oh, it looked intentions. to you like there was probably room on the door for both of them? Like maybe there was space and it was a big enough door and would have supported both their bodies out of the water and Jack wouldn't have had to freeze and they could have... I can't remember if I actually thought that when I first saw the movie, because I was, I was young, obviously. Um, I can't remember if I, I thought didn't... that, but I'm pretty sure Mythbusters did do this, and they proved that it's possible, but it'd be really difficult that you'd have to get the life preservers underneath the door, and that's not something that's simple to pull off. When well, um, you're freezing, yeah. I mean, and, and plus, when you're going, you know, when you're in this scenario, you know, you know you're, probably not, you're probably not at your most lucid. But this is my, this is my, uh, how it comes down to an issue, right? Let's just say, for example, I adore Titanic, and then Rags brought this to me. He's like, by the way, Jack could have just gotten on the door, dude. That kind of takes away from the entire final event and then I, and then I'd be like hmm could you have gotten on the door and then it's like how could we find that out and it's like well look at the scene see the space see how much it's floating I guess it's kind of inconclusive and then you get people like Mythbusters to have like some kind of definitive proof that we could discuss we, it doesn't have to be that I automatically assume that Rags is trying to undo my perspective that Rags is like to dunk on him but yeah. even then isn't isn't that a form of appreciating the movie in a like, what's wrong with that? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's a discussion to me. It didn't need to become this idea of us versus them. Like, I... Yeah, did Mythbusters... Did you assume that Mythbusters hate this movie because they tested it? Exactly. Also, I need to pee because I drink a lot of water. <laughs> okay. I need a lot of pussy. Well, well, while he's going for people, what's your take on movie, Bob, uh, smug boy? Uh, just overly... Bombastic and pedantic. 
Um, and he's, he's, his ideas are, they're not connected. Like he's, he's <laughs> saying things that, that are not, um, equally transferable to what he's trying to explain. So it's like, okay, you have subjective opinions and you cannot observe the objective or you cannot express objective. It's like, yes, you can. We do it all the time. We do it in science. We do it with uh, the scientific method. We do it with math. We do it, um, sitting down for lunch. I mean, it's, this is a common practice. So it seems as if he's putting a, a high level of, of importance to people interpreting things as opposed to people understanding what they're seeing and, and observing like this, this is what we do. When we look at a movie a game, we go, this is what's going on. This is not my opinion. This is actually what's happened. Yeah. And that's it. That's all we're doing. We're not doing anything special. And I genuinely think it makes for an interesting conversation. And if you don't want to be a part of that conversation, that's absolutely fine. Pretty much. Yeah. Like if you go, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about how it made me feel. It's like, okay, sure. Well, that's not what we're talking about. Like, so, you know, that's cool and everything. And it's not that we wouldn't talk about it. It's just that don't do it at the exact same time. Like you, you highlight to me that Luke is inconsistent. And then I say, well, I enjoyed it. You'd be like, Okay. That's fine. Good. There's nothing to do with what I said. Because <laughs> that's the thing, yes, they, the, they automatically assume you're presenting your feelings. I felt yeah, that the, he was inconsistent, rather than the, he was I, inconsistent. What I observe over the years is what people, or what I've seen in, in media, which is actually good, is not how, how you know, the highs of drama or the highs of, of science fiction or whatever. It's that that piece of fiction didn't have any lows didn't have any errors, didn't have any flaws. So things like The Princess Bride is just a fun adventure movie that happens to be about romance and happens to be about a frame where uh, a grandfather a loses his... A pause? Sorry? Oh. A sneeze? <laughs> yeah, what was no, that, right? Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just talking about how, how great The uh, Princess Bride movie is. Well. Oh, yeah. Books. Uh, because it's so simple, there's there's very there are actually plot holes in there, but the actual storytelling doesn't make you aware of them very well. They're there if you think about them, but it's magical enough. It draws you in enough that you're you're following everything and everything's so clear that you don't stop and think and go, "Hey, wait a second, doesn't uh, Wesley have a whole pirate army on his boat? Can't they just rush the castle?" You know, all these little questions that pop up. You don't think about it, and after the fact, you do think about it. Like, yeah, yeah, that, that that is kind of silly, but it still doesn't degrade the story. It yeah, just makes you think at it in a different way. Yeah, you could take something like that, and you could just go all the way with it, and you could say this, you know, the Princess Bride, it, there are plot holes everywhere, and you can prove that they're plot holes, and okay, sure, it, it's okay to still love the movie. Exactly. We shouldn't need yeah. to say that, but we apparently have to all the time. Yeah. lived happily ever after and that's such an obvious plot contrivance and it totally broke your immersion wow you're so right it's just such bad writing that 220 somethings you just spent hours running he really is focused on this door thing uh, yeah somebody. this seems like he's pissed about this <laughs> like somebody... is it, do, you th do you think this is the reason why he puts it in so that people will be like, oh yeah i agree with that and so that all the other stupid shit that went well, on in in the in the in the video he's making, they just, it just it gets oh, glossed I see over. What you mean. Like I agree with him on this bit, so the rest of it's probably right. He's like, if I sprinkle this this video of fucking garbledy gook with this door thing that everyone knows about or, or people have heard about, or with this and that, then maybe I can trick people into thinking this is good content. I mean, like I said, so before the analysis, I knew about the Mythbusters thing, so as far as I'm concerned, it's not even an issue, because it would have been really hard for Jack to have done what was suggested, and it would have risked Rose, which is another reason why he could have decided, yeah, fuck it, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, because once you get wet, you're fucked. Yeah, but there's, there's a lot. It's just, it, it makes sense, I think, that scene. But um, let's see what, he seems to have counters to this. You're so right. It's just such bad writing that two 20-somethings who just spent hours running, climbing, handcuff escaping, getting shot at, nearly drowning multiple times, all while escaping a sinking ship and are now gradually freezing to death in the middle of the f***ing ocean, conscious of the fact that they may be exchanging their last words to each other on Earth, don't act with 100% clear-headed logic. 
But that's yeah, on Earth or on the ocean. Okay, see what I mean? This is, this is why we, this is evidence that we do listen to them. By the way, he made a lot of logical arguments for why they would be unable to have committed to to the action. Right? He said like they would have been exhausted. They would have been way over their heads. That they, they, they've been through extreme drama. It's like all these things you can actually consider. These are things that actually happened. And then he's yeah. like, "So why didn't they make a logical decision? Because they're emotional right now." It's like you, know, you don't need to. You don't need to say that. That 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 wasn't actually some. That's like a different argument now. You were talking about actual tangible things that we can actually discuss. Like, if Jack was exhausted, he's not going to be able to pull off the task that Mythbusters said would have been required. So that's an actual argument. Which he would be t exhausted because of the amount of swimming and running and everything that he's just described. Like, this is... And he's doing right now what I assumed was his issue in the first place with people. You know, like, um, we present an argument that's, like, pedantic with all the information presented, and then he actually counters. He provides a bunch of even more pedantic information to actually make the scenario make sense. And then he's like, also, you shouldn't do this anyway. And it's just like, oh, well... Uh, Patrick Williams did the same thing. He said, like, um, these things don't matter, and then he actually has responses, like, to counter them. It's like, if they don't matter, why are you even bothering with the, with the counters? Yeah, he denies logic and starts using it. It's, it's exactly hypocritical. Very, very strange. And start puzzling out the weight, mass, area, buoyancy ratio of their present situation. That would have been so much more narratively and emotionally satisfying than it doesn't matter. Well, fuck it. We could fix it. We'd just make the door smaller. Yeah, if, and if, maybe people do find that satisfying. Like he he went through all this trouble to try and explain it away. When I could just be like, I think the scene may have run a bit better if we made the door small enough that it looked like it could fit one and a half roses, and so you'd be like, oh yeah, if he gets on there too, it's probably not going to last. Like there you go. If you make the door big enough that everyone's asking why couldn't Jack get on it too, who knows? Maybe that could be an element of maybe we should change that up. But again, as far as I know, this was proven to be that Jack probably wouldn't be able to do it, so... Yeah, the, and you know what I mean? The conversation's over. I didn't even tell you what I felt about the scene there. I didn't say whether it was bad or good, even. I just said you could make that change, so why not make that change? And that would be something to consider next time you make this film, or someone has a similar scene. There you go. Nobody had to be hurt, you know? We didn't have to take anything away from anybody when we said that matter that they both could ever not because Jack willingly allows himself to die in order to make absolutely sure that Rose does not. A final act of such complete selfless devotion that cements our understanding of why this was the defining emotional connection of her entire life as symbolized by the fact that she has never revealed the heart of the ocean, the only keepsake of that part of her life to anyone until symbolically returning it and herself to the sea. See, he thinks that's subjective. That's all objective as far as I know. These are all things yeah. that actually happen in the film. Yeah, all of those things you could trace and track and they're established. And so, like, this is so weird, but, like, I agree with you, Bob. <laughs> like, so I follow why, this. Bob, why don't, why don't you agree with yourself? <laughs> which is what you call a series of themes, if you have even a rudimentary grasp. Uh, don't think Wait, you need... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I don't think you call them themes. Yeah, what is he talking about here? Let's, let's just give that a full listen again. This was the defining emotional connection of her entire life as symbolized by the fact that she has never revealed the heart of the ocean, the only keepsake of that part of her life to anyone until symbolically returning it and herself to the sea, which is what you call a series of themes, if you have even a rudimentary grasp of how humans work as emotional beings. Wait, wait, wait. Symbolically returning it and herself her? to the... She actually returned it and herself to the ocean. <laughs> but she... She didn't... She just threw it back in. She didn't go back in. Oh, wait, yeah. She doesn't go back in, does she? She, yeah, she just she, dies. She stays on the boat, and she dies. I'm very confused, <laughs> uh, because he's mixed a lot of things that actually happen, and he's decided to, con like... And what's the theme? What does the theme have to do with all of this? Yeah, what, the theme is... I'd love to hear him... Dis what is the theme in, in, a, in, a, in a sentence, or just described in a... In it's an anti-capitalist message. The theme of never forget who truly loved you. If that's the a theme. theme of uh, kill. Uh, uh, forget the past. Kill it if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. But I think what's really interesting here too is that right after this he says, "Ahem," which is really like you're doing a good thing. Kind of, you're like analyzing stuff that's in the film. You're pointing yeah. out things that actually happen. You made up the one about returning herself to the ocean. You fucking made that up. Pull that out of your ass. 
but <laughs> the the rest of it was really good. And you're trying to pass it off as like you're doing a good thing, but then you told us earlier you, it's not a good thing. Is it where? What is your stance, Bob? Is it the theme of what makes true love? Is that it? True. I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. I'm confused because that's the thing about themes. <laughs> they can be fucking anything you want them to be, basically. <laughs> that was just a very. So that's just a confusing open. section. This is the thing. If he was here, we could actually have like an actual discussion, right? That would take so long to get through to understand that he would have had to have made like an hour video to get his point across with clarity. But then well, he, he would have be, had to justify it. But then he would be looked at the same way that I am, where it's like, ah, you fucking have to. You couldn't explain a simple idea in under an hour. That's a pathetic video. Very strange. So you had to do this in nine minutes, and it's only now that I'm starting to, like, be able to chew on something. But it's only because he actually had references for a movie yeah, that existed. Yeah, but it's because he did the thing that he started off saying was not good. Yeah, he's doing it. He's doing the reverse, right? So we, we pick all these things apart in Titanic, let's say. Then he picks it apart back at us. He's like, look at all these things. These are good things. These are things that tell us things. And it's like, oh, oh, great. And then he's like, this is Thebe. And you're like, what? <laughs> Didn't follow that. <laughs> like, themes. If you have even a rudimentary grasp of how humans work as emotional beings, ahem. Yeah, he's saying. I guess he's telling us that we don't have a rudimentary grasp of how people work as human beings. Yeah, so, we don't. Because themes. Yeah, because the person, themes. the person who's an unironic apologist for eugenics is telling us about rudimentary understanding of how people's emotions work. It's so good job, Bob. They're really ruining the word theme. I find they use it for everything. And like, see all. Just, yeah, because it, it can be so much and so little and everything and nothing. And like it's putting it, saying it's better than everything else in terms of elements, and then you're like, but you haven't even told me what it is to you. It's just this mystical thing that happens. Ahem. See also, no, it is not in fact a big problem that Indiana Jones could have just sat out the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark because the Lost Ark was just going to blow up the Nazis when they tried to open it anyway. Yeah, but he didn't know that. Yeah, I so, need to, uh, honestly, I haven't seen that film in so long that I'm not going to be able to counter whatever point he's making here, to be honest. Yeah, so he, yeah, I think he's making the point that it kills the Nazis at the end, so he didn't. it turns out he didn't have to bother. But he didn't know that, so he acted in a logical way. With the information he had. Yeah, so I don't know what Bob's point is other than Bob's wrong again. I just... <laughs> I don't understand this man. <laughs> I don't, want to say I don't that understand this again. fucking man. The plot mechanics of how that group of a dozen or so Nazis and Belloc got blown up. It's about Dr. Jones undergoing a fundamental evolution in the way he views the supernatural and values the intangible esoteric value of the treasures he runs around grave robbing and was blithely dismissive of at the beginning of the story. So does he consider wait, 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 is all of this plot objective? Mechanics? What is he talking about? Is all of this objective or subjective? Because what he sounds like he's saying is things that could be proven. With references, like, you know when he says Dr. Jones didn't take whatever seriously, you play a little clip of him saying, like, that's a bunch of mumbo-jumbo. And then, well, at the end of the film, that's not mumbo-jumbo at all. It's like, <laughs> there you go. What are, what are the plot mechanics of him, whatever he was developing as, I think he was talking about, learning about whatever he said. Uh, <laughs> what is that, tra how does that translate? How does that even work? What, what, what plot mechanics do we have to go through to learn that? Or did he have to learn? Also, he's... what. If you catch it, he's making that same argument that uh, Willems did, where in his mind, the the Ark thing doesn't make sense, right? Let's just go with that for a second. That Let's say he always knew that the Ark was going to do that, so going for it made no sense. He's saying that doesn't matter because the film is about him moving forward as a character. Now, if you remember, Patrick Willems said that the fact that Holdo acts like a complete fucking idiot doesn't matter because it's about giving a chance for Finn and Poe to grow. So it, <laughs> it comes back to the idea, it's like, so you can have a plot that makes sense, or you can choose one that doesn't. Why did you choose the one that didn't make sense? Because that's <laughs> what happens when your first draft is the final draft. Or, because it made sense to them at first, and then they were like, oh fuck, well I've made the movie now. <laughs> like, no, because that's the thing, you could save it all with themes. Exactly. It's the magical exactly. panacea to all your narrative woes. Apply directly to the forehead. Story in the more immediate past, beginning of the story in the more immediate past. See, yes, the most recent main series Star Wars movie. Uh -oh. I want. What did he? What did he write there? Let's. Let's. I'm not sure how he introduced the Lost Jedi. There. Let's have a look. View of the treasures he runs around grave robbing and was blithely dismissive of at the beginning of the story. 
I like it. Of course, movie Bob. It's not archaeology. It's grave robbing. It's like, okay, I gotcha. Sure. In the more immediate past, see, yes, the most recent main series Star Wars movie. Activate shields. Deflector shield. Okay. Because we're all going to hate him for defending The Last Jedi. I get it. Yeah. Some of you are going to love me and some of you are going to hate me. <sighs> well, yes, the most recent main series Star balls. Wars movie. Which has been decried by a grand swath of the internet as being awash in contrivance, poor storytelling, and plot holes galore by virtue of it depicting its main cast of emotionally compromised 20-year-olds thrust haphazardly into unprepared leadership positions during a mass- Ah, uh, so he's making the argument that things don't make sense because it's being led by a bunch of young people who are emotionally, uh, you know, flawed. Like Holdo. Holdo is very young, <laughs> uh, very inexperienced. This general doesn't know anything about Jeez. command. I, gotcha. I wished all these women had flaws that they could go and develop with. But I didn't actually see any, so yeah, hmm. I don't know what he's referring to exactly. Yeah, isn't Rose I mean, a young person? I guess she wasn't flawed at all. So I just let's hear it all to make sure. Well, but I'm pretty instincts. sure he's saying that uh, it's stupid for us to complain that things aren't logical because these are emotional and young characters making mistakes. I think that's what he's getting at. Recent main series Star Wars movie. <laughs> Which has been decried by a grand swath of the internet as being awash in contrivance, poor storytelling, and plot holes galore by virtue of it depicting its main cast of emotionally compromised 20-year-olds thrust haphazardly into unprepared leadership positions during a massive war is making a lot of mistakes, trusting the wrong people and or instincts and generally war, not op- There you go. So that's... Yeah. He, he thinks that explains the issues in The Last Jedi. Yeah, it's... yeah. The, the plot holes in The Last Jedi are because young people in what he claims is a giant war is... Um, they can't make good decisions. If I can, which explain doesn't this. explain which doesn't explain Holdo, which doesn't explain Hux, which Leia. doesn't explain Snoke, no. which doesn't explain Leia. I and mean, it's like it doesn't explain Luke. I just, I don't. <laughs> I'm so like, it, man, wow. What I what I'm hearing here, taken to the extreme, is you 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 watch a film where there's an emotionally breaking down character who's just really upset and angry, and they walk through a door. And it just opens up into like an, a, a fucking a, a giant pit and they fall right into it and then land on a drag and it takes them back up. And then someone says, you know, like a teacher of, of the school that they were in, don't go down to the dragon pit ever again, okay? And they're like, yeah, okay. We point out that that made no sense whatsoever because it's, it's like based in Earth or whatever. And then they go, yeah, but she's emotionally, you know, she's young and she's emotional. So this illogical thing that takes place is explained because she's emotional. Like... You've completely blended two types of, of like, discussions. Again, they keep doing this. Like, something making no, no sense uh, in the plot is not explained by someone being emotional. Just make every, every character in all media young, and there are no plot holes anymore. Yeah, that's the thing. Any problem you could ever come up with, you could be like, oh, well, the characters were young and emotional. Yeah, they were, they were young and emotional, or they were old and senile. It's like, why, why weren't they using Y-Wings? They were young and emotional. It's like, what? Yeah. what? Why didn't Hux, sh why, why did Hux target the base first? Because young and emotional. Poe was young and emotional. I'm uh, why was Yoda uh, able to use lightning as a force ghost? We've never seen that before. Because Yoda is because young and emotional. He's young and emotional. <laughs> Fuck, Bob. Did you watch this fucking movie? Did he watch oh this God. video back? That's another question. Operating on a 100% logical basis at all times. I mean, sure, it could be that there's a rattle unsubtle thematic intent to that, made obvious by the recurring plot presence of multiple dysfunctions. Subtle what made obvious. What the hell is he talking about? Them thematic pre plot presence? Like, what the... What Dude, are these terms? He's he's said really it was, he said it was a subtle thing made obvious. Like... <laughs> Let's do it again, I swear. Just at all times. I mean, sure, it could be that there's a rattle unsubtle thematic intent oh, to that. Oh, sorry, he said unsubtle. That's my bad. Unsubtle. I could have sworn he said un subtle. That would have been funnier. Unsubtle thematic it's... intent. What the freaking hell Unsubtle is that thematic intent. It that, that can't be found no matter how hard you... It's so unsubtle, it can't be found. Logical basis at all times. I mean, sure, it could be that there's a rattle unsubtle thematic intent to that, and made obvious by the recurring plot presence of multiple dysfunctional mentor pupil relationships and an overarching what? theme of generational what? transition, but. <laughs> what? What? what is plot presence? Does anyone know? Plot he's presence. Just, it means that it is the... present within the film because the entire <laughs> film is the plot, I suppose. It's just another one of those shitty surface like, level. Literally, he said something TLJ extremely simple, but he made it sound complicated with words that were unnecessary. I, 
and I've, then he was I've just used, flat out wrong on top I've of it. I've used all. the word plot a lot in a lot of my analyses, but I've never used plot presence. Like what? It's another way of saying it was there. <laughs> <laughs> Not even kidding, dude. Like uh, whatever. Well, he, it's the claim that the, it's the claim that they were there. Multiple dysfunctional mentor pupil relationships and an overarching theme of generational transition, but nah, it must just be bad writing or writing in service of an agenda. And that well, so an overarching um, theme, uh, as opposed to the normal theme, which is explains everything. So there's a, there's a bigger theme which explains everything else, I assume. And the the whole like what nonsense to say it's in favor of of, of an agenda, and it's like. What if the directors and the writers tell you that they had an agenda? <laughs> Does yeah. that mean there is still no agenda? <laughs> like, it's it's like the Macintosh video where he starts off by oh saying it's a conspiracy boy. and well, then the, spends the rest of the video explaining exactly the thing, why the conspiracy is hmm. re the point of the video. Macintosh's conclusion is the Last Jedi is a film about men learning that they need to listen to women to improve themselves or something like that, and it's important for gender equality. It's like yeah, well, that's the last line of this. And it's this like, video. that sounds like a fucking agenda. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have the definition yeah. wrong. Does Movie Bob dare to disagree with Jonathan McIntosh? Yeah, I, I feel like those two would be. They wouldn't want to step scary. on each other's toes, you know? I wouldn't That's want fine... Movie Bob to step on my toes, too. I'm fucking probably crush him. <laughs> An agenda. And that's the final most insidious aspect of plot hole obsessed film culture's devaluation of thematic the, the, analysis. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. The, the, the veneer of quasi empiricism. <laughs> <laughs> the de evaluation analysis? What? Let's try it. Let's try it one more time. Writing in service of an agenda. And that's the final most insidious aspect of plot hole obsessed film culture's devaluation of thematic analysis. The veneer of quasi empiricism can be a very effective. Dude. De, de evaluation of thematic analysis. The veneer of quasi empiricism. Dude, I, I I see your I see your googly gawk and raise you. <laughs> <laughs> just, what the hell? <laughs> Why did you have to say all of it that way? <laughs> did what? So I, I'm kind of in disbelief that that's he wrote that and he thought yeah that's that's a really great way to get right. my point across. So at the top of my browser, my first uh, my first bookmark is to a thesaurus, and the reason that I use it is because if I I don't want to use the same word over and over, it's not so that I can go out of my way to try and sound intelligent, you know. It's just so that oh, I've used this word a lot. I want to use... just for the sake of people listening. Let's use a, you know a different word for it. I want to use the exact quote in my next April Fool's video, so I'm gonna to have to listen to this just to just to make sure I get it. Writing in service of it's like a parody, and that's the final most insidious aspect of plot hole obsessed film culture's devaluation of thematic. And Dude, uh, you know what? No, I'll I'll write it later. It's gonna take me way too long to write this out because I'd fucking I'd have to keep replaying it because he speaks so fucking fast. So I'll just write a a note of where it is. <laughs> Movie Bob plot hole. What is this surfers? What does Pothole Surfers mean, do you think? It's Butthole Surfers reference. The band. Oh. Okay. They, yeah, there's a band called, old band called Butthole Surfers. And he's he's referencing them. Because this like, movie is ass. It's like, uh, he says that it's ridiculous for us to assume an agenda, and he's constantly talking about like the agenda behind people doing the plot hole analysis. You find it's that interesting? Strange. Yeah. And that's the final most insidious aspect of plot hole obsessed film culture. Oh, well, that's the thing. It's only a conspiracy when the bad guys do it. Yeah. There's deep evaluation of thematic <laughs> analysis, the veneer of quasi-empiricism can be a very effective tool for nefariously slipping one's own subjective viewpoint or value one you know might other... It's funny it's because... Nefarious. It's what... nefarious to, to take your own subjective viewpoint. That's a nefarious thing. Like, Dude, what? there's so much wrong with this. <laughs> <I can't see. laughs> He just argued that, like, people use plot holes to try and get their own nefarious subjective perspectives across the board. <laughs> I feel like, like he's heading towards Nazism. He's getting there. He's gonna be like... Here's the thing. People, people are trying to use evidence to support their claim. People are trying to use what's in the movie to show, here's why I feel the things that I feel. Uh, but, it, but that's... Like, that, how, that's bad? It's you know he he says it's nefarious. <laughs> like this is typical movie Just, Bob is like if you have an opinion that differs from mine it's nefarious. 
Have you, have, by, Smud, have you ever, have you ever, like, read this guy's fucking crazy ass tweets and shit? Uh, only in memes. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like this movie, Bob's insane. <laughs> <laughs> he's insane. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, he's he's nuts. Like I have nothing to say. I can't. Understand. Exactly. Like if we let this play again for just the the fifteen seconds or whatever, just take oh, in God. these words. It's absolute insanity. An agenda. And that's the final, most insidious aspect of plot hole obsessed film culture's devaluation of thematic insidious. analysis. The veneer of quasi empiricism can be a very effective tool for nefariously slipping one's own subjective uh -oh. viewpoint or value, one that you know might otherwise be challenged or get you called out as reactionary or worse, into the discourse, nestling it covertly among the nitpicks until it sounds like just one more true but meaninglessly so factoid. See, he thinks. Cool. Was the people I are trying to throw their like almost their politics into the discussion or something like because he said he said yeah quasi empiricism. I thought he said quasi imperialism because he was talking about the movie. I was like, wait, no, no, no. He's talking about. But that's the thing with movie Bob. You could believe that he brings up quasi imperialism. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's he's saying they argue the facts while trying to slip their own uh, subjective feelings underneath instead of Which being is, outward about that's it. That's not what I do. That's that not what the exact do. opposite of what we do. Exactly. And uh, that, that's, the, that's the part he doesn't seem to get. It, it would be like me going, um, The Last Jedi is all about how the government is trying to make frogs gay. That's how I open. And then I, you'd be like, okay, that's ridiculous. Or, <laughs> or I go, so I'm going to do a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown. Hey, this is, this is interesting. In the scene where he's milking the, um, the gay frog... Uh, he's blah, 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 blah. and then I go interesting how that's gay frogs in this film huh wonder what that's about who knows and then I and I keep alluding to it until at the end I go weird I guess we have to conclude that this film is trying to convince us that the government is making frogs gay I think that's what he's saying that we do like trying to get our weird insane idea across through as many facts as we can find that would match I, it I, maybe maybe you you think that I I wish one is, of us can make sense of this. <laughs> are gay frogs as nefarious as just saying the last Jedi is not very well written? <laughs> it's like, does it have to be so nefarious that you know? I just, I just, I don't, don't really see where he's coming from. I'd love to get an example. Wouldn't that be cool? Just an example of someone doing no, what he's saying. No, because those are nuts, nefarious. If he's like shows a guy's video where he says that uh, the last Jedi proves that socialism will destroy planet Earth. And well, like, we already have enough proof without the movie, but <laughs> the idea to put well, this this is the irony, man. Movie Bob always pushes his politics through media. Yeah, that's why every, that's why when you know the escapists came out and said we're going to try to be apolitical, and then they said we're hiring Movie Bob. Everyone was like, <laughs> um, "You sure? You sure you're you're sure you're apolitical? Also, Are we're, you we're actually, sure? We're nearly there, guys. It's like a minute and a half." Hopefully he has an outro that's like not related. Oh, I, I hope he's got a... Like... Uh oh. Oh gosh, look at this. You, are you guys Zarbon of Akkad. Look, look what he typed into the search. Dumbest shit on YouTube. And uh, so you can see Dishonored Wolf, Sargon of Akkad. Um, I'm not sure whose video that is. That's obviously mine. That's Dave Cullen. That's PewDiePie. So obviously all of us are the dumbest shit on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, take a pass at someone who's far more popular and more influential than you will ever hope to be in your life, Bob. I know that makes you upset. Yeah, let's check out how he's going to represent us uh, very fairly. The nitpicks until it sounds like just one more true but meaninglessly so factoid. Why don't they just use Lightspeed Kamikaze all the time if it's so effective? Can all the Jedi Astral Project seems useful? You're telling me that two women in leadership roles here and they aren't constantly fighting and undercutting one another as all women are factually want to do it? Good lord. Did you guys get what? that? He, he started off pretty solid yeah, he with, started two with two very fair facts. questions and then it went into more women. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's his point. That's what he's saying our videos do. Where we, we say fact, fact, and then we slip in a crazy idea with the facts. But again, Bob, this should be easy to prove, man. Just get a clip. Get a clip. You don't need to literally create a straw man for Sargon called Zarbon. <laughs> you couldn't be any more I clear I like it with because this. of how subtle it is. Yeah, I, I couldn't. You couldn't tell, could you? And look at the look at the description. It's a trap to overthrow and undermine Western civilization. It's like, yep. I mean, if Sargon wrote that, I'd imagine it was parody, but, you know, I'm sure he thinks that that's what we all think about this. Yeah. 
Whitwork, why would Luke leave a map if he had no intention yeah. of wanting to be found? Uh, wait, I'm sorry, what was that third? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately curious if he was going to um, answer some of those. I was, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, why didn't his own He's inventing a straw man just for us. Thank you very much. Okay. But that's the thing. He has to invent a straw man, but he's like, but I'll hide it with, uh, I'll hide it in the middle of a bunch of things that actually make sense. In fairness to that last I just point, won't talk about them. I don't believe there is any reference that Luke was the one who left the map. We assume he did because it's in R2-D2, but from the writers, at least this is what I found, they are, they are saying that R2-D2 has the, the big part of the map because when he was fiddling around with the Death Star or whenever else in the Empire, he downloaded the big portion of the map that the Empire also have, which is what Kylo alludes to. The film never actually says that Luke oh. left the map behind. Oh, that's a reasonable inference to make. Well, this is the thing. I understand why people thought that, because the film does not give you hardly any information about the fucking map. So you're left to assume, and then it's like, Luke wanted to die? Why the hell did he leave a map behind? And then you're like, well, technically he yeah, didn't. Because, <laughs> because everybody... It's, it's so out there. It's very strange. Like I said, uh, the reasoning from the writers are is that um, R2 had the map, and the smaller portion of the map was given to... Uh, what's his name? The, the old dude at the beginning? And I'm not... Uh, we're supposed to assume that he was looking for the Jedi Temple which is where everyone assumed that Luke was going because apparently Luke went searching for it and let people know that that's what he was doing. But it's interesting. I'm glad this was, I'm glad this was in the film. Yeah, I know. And, and, and then you're like, but wait, why was he searching for the Jedi Temple if he just wanted to die? Did he, just, he just really he wanted was, to die there? Was he sentimental because, like about because dying the there? Because the theme is <laughs> about the... <laughs> it, either way, right? We just got a conversation out of that. And, yeah. you know, if you two didn't know about what I just said, then now you do. And it's like, huh, there you go. That can assist you in an argument next time I'm you talk about it or enlighten you in any way or maybe it didn't matter to you at all. We didn't, ha I didn't have to fucking, like, tell you your feelings don't matter. <laughs> so I've got to, I've got to use the, I got to use it. I got to take a piss again. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's all right. I'll read some well, super chats. Um, this is where the fun begins. Watch Maul vs. Obi-Wan at the end, uh, the one from Rebels. It's five minutes and it's an amazing scene in otherwise dull series. I've actually seen that clip before I'd watched any of the shows just because I was interested in um, the idea. Someone was like, they did this, and I was like, oh, wait, really? And I checked it out. Uh, the real insult here is he's low-key comparing you guys to cinema since a lot of people do. Um, in fact, there's a lot of comments online I've seen that say that I'm much worse than cinema sins because... Cinema Sins is like more obviously a joke, while I try to convince people that I'm serious even though I'm joking or something like that. So, you know, take that for what you will. Question for Wolf. Ah, uh, I'm afraid he's gone. But, uh, just, um, I don't know. Cinema PM with that one. Um, it was Kill Fuck Barry, Toby Wiseau, Jared, and ER. I don't know what he would say to that, honestly. Ryan Johnson quote There has to be a plot before you can have plot holes. I agree. <laughs> Is that actual Ryan quote? This movie, Bob, I can't understand it freaking word. This, I need, oh, this movie, Bob, I can't understand it freaking word. I, I think I follow what you're saying there. Why is movie yeah. Bob such a faggot? You can't say that. <laughs> That's rude. Do you think movie Bob realizes that if he ever again brings up a plot hole in a film, people can just use this video against him and call him a reductionist? Yeah. This is the problem for them. This is, I can't remember if we said this live. into a corner. I can't remember just if like said this. Right. Yeah, I can't remember if we said this live or not, but we were saying like, imagine being that little bird on their shoulder whenever they watch or enjoy anything, and then they say, "Well, that didn't make sense," and then you just go, "What do you mean? What do you mean it didn't make sense? It doesn't matter. It doesn't now matter." Now you the have to explain yourself, so you're <laughs> fucked. Thesis: The Last Jedi is a bad film. There you go. A Mauler, Big Daddy, Rags, and Wolf. Hello back, hey. John Reese. That was John Reese that said that. Rags. Say hello back piece of shit. You guys say hi to future me while watching this tomorrow. Hello future unspan unspun one. There you go. Imola, do a lot of 3D design work. Would you like a 3D printed drink coaster with your channel logo on it by any chance? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna get some new art eventually. So, um, if ever you wanted to do that, I would say hold off for now. Uh, you'll murder the very concept of culture, not just culture itself. Uh, what? Did he actually say the concept of culture or just no idea. It, it, it's trouble enough to follow, anyway. The greatest movie is just good themes, which is why the greatest movie ever made is a video of Daisy Ridley reciting positive tweets for three hours. <laughs> well, 
That's the thing, man. If all that matters is themes, then surely the best movie would just be shoving as many as you could into one movie. Like, just get get all the best... Google the best themes, and then have a character read them out, as, as you pretty much implied there. <laughs> best movie ever. Uh, problem is twofold. He's arguing that it's becoming common for people to use the term plot hole as a shorthand for everything they didn't understand, like, no matter if it actually is one. I agree with that. That, that would be a problem. Yeah. If it's happening, obviously. Yeah. Pizza rolls are Italian gushers. Uh, then further, that people have begun settling for just listing these erroneous plot holes as conclusive proof that their opinion is fact, rather than providing research and legitimate evidence. Again, if they're doing that, that is bad. But like, if someone said I was doing that in, in The Last Jedi Critique, I would be frustrated because I'd be like, man, I spent a long time getting those references. I'd appreciate it if they were debunked rather than just waved off as opinion, you know? There's a difference between those those two types of people, but if Bob is... I mean, Bob is clearly coming after, for some reason, me, Wolf, Sargon, Dave Cullen, PewDiePie, and, and whoever else. Like, we're all in the same group, apparently. Remember, I'm the angry guy who made the five-hour videos, according to uh, Patrick Willems. Hey guys, heard you mention it yesterday, but Detroit Become Human isn't actually that bad. I actually has good world building and death has real branching consequences for the three main characters. I have not played it. I don't know if Rags has or Smud. Which which game? Detroit Become Human. No, no, I I play games. Oh, oh! <laughs> Again, I know nothing about it. So, no, David Cage plays you. That's how it works. Oops. Uh, what is he? What he's saying? Since y'all don't know the source matter and it's not explained in full detail, y'all deem it as a plot hole. Uh, if you require extra sources to be able to understand the plot in a film, you may be in trouble. Yes. Um, everybody pa pancakes or waffles? Um, um, waffles. I'm gonna go with waffles. I'll, None against pancakes, but I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with waffles. I was gonna say I'm cool with both of them. I'll just I'll be safe and go with waffles. These two chose it. It must be for a good reason. Uh, you ever had chicken and pancakes? I think no. so. <laughs> when are I you, have had chicken and waffles, though. When are you and Wolf going to digivolve as critics? Uh, obviously, that, that's Did next up on the, on the agenda. Uh, what's each of your favorite prequels, and why do you think it's so much easier to like the prequels despite how awful they are? I think it's because you can see a good story behind the bad execution. Well, for me, it's uh, Revenge of the Sith. I just think that there's a lot more going on in it. In it. It stands the test of scrutiny better than the other two, uh, and I generally enjoy the film more. But um, as for as for why it's easier to like them, I imagine a lot of people would disagree with that statement. For me, it's that uh, yeah, I, I actually think I would say, I agree with the reasoning that um, I think I can see a good idea behind bad execution. That's probably how I put it. What about you guys? Uh, I, mean, I can see one. bad. I can yeah. I can... They got progress progressively better. Um, it was a very low bar, but it, they did get better. Wait, for what now? The prequels? The prequels. <clears throat> uh, I guess they got better, yeah. Well, but like I'm you assuming, said, that's a pretty low bar. Uh, which is the favorite for you two? I'm assuming Smuds is Revenge of the Sith if he said they progressively got better. <laughs> yeah, probably Revenge point. of the Sith. Yeah, fair enough. Um... Uh, 10 FPS are memories of Minecraft on a notebook. I would respond to the feeling straw man. We recognize the value of feelings, but they are subordinate to logical thought from our perspective. We are concerned about them taking the lead in discussion. Um, Correct. Yeah, which I because that's something that I feel that... something. Therefore, this government policy should be enacted. I feel something. Therefore, it is morally righteous for me to punch you on the street. And when it comes to art analysis or whatever, some people are like, why do you? Why are you saying that uh, objective? Uh, assessments are better than subjective ones and it's like it's not about being better it's literally just drawing the line so that we can actually have a concise and clear conversation that's all you don't have to say if anything if anything is it's unifying yeah like, if we can both agree on something that it's much easier to agree on something that's objective and that kind of brings us together into a conversation hmm. yeah and plus if you want to use just objective observations you don't have to do the art form you can do the genre you can do the medium you can do a certain aspect, and you can still use the same technique. So, mm -hmm. it's more useful, I think. Uh, Bob marked Infinity War is released in 2017. How? Yeah, he, keep, he keeps going for the whole video, so I guess he just he must have missed that one. 
Uh, my question is, is Bob's position on Tyler Perry feels or logic based? It's one of the things I remember Bob saying from before I stopped watching him. I don't, I'm assuming you're saying he likes Tyler Perry and that, or he doesn't, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't expect consistency from movie Bob. Yeah, no, I, I certainly wouldn't either. There's none in this video, so I doubt there's going to be as a, his total wick. Uh, I haven't seen Weird Salad this impenetrable since my attempt to read Eagle, Hegel? Hegel. Hegel. Um, you're an old soul, Mola, wise bef bef what, beyond your years. <laughs> yes, I am a, an ancient, wise, 24-year-old wizard. Uh, the bombers in The Last Jedi were designed by an SJW, thus the white male designed Y-Wing wasn't used. I see. There's the agenda, <laughs> guys. Slip it in. That's yeah, because the Y-Wing is like the Y-chromosome. Damn. So given the tons yeah. of talk about plot and story, I'm currently jotting down a script aimed at explaining the difference between the two in action. I think I'll loosely ref reference Fail Bob during it. <laughs> More power to you, because I don't think he's helping make the conversation clearer in this video at all. Uh, we need to bring Movie Bob on for a live debate. Mola vs. Movie Good Bob, luck. Dawn of Quasi-Empiricism. I seriously doubt he would <laughs> ever consider me worth his time. Uh, a. Use your feelings. B. I felt angry. A, at a kid's movie with women in power, garbage human. Oh, right, so the, person A says, use your feelings. Person B says, okay, I felt angry. And then person A says, at a kid's movie with women in power, you're a garbage human. Like, yeah, that, that is actually a, another contradiction. They're saying, like, you should yep. value your emotional reaction, and then when you provide it to them, they get frustrated with you. <laughs> well, that's why he called them nefarious earlier on. He's like, if you're a subjective... Imp you know, the subjective stuff is far more important, but if it's not the right subjective opinion, then fuck you. Black Panther is putting chemicals in the water to make the rhino milk gay. <laughs> <laughs> the rhino milk turns you gay, you, except it ain't milk. Do you think Ryan Johnson thinks he's good at sex because he subverts a woman's expectations by not giving her an orgasm? That would... You know, you could use that as an analogy for <laughs> The Last Jedi in some ways. Huh. Like, I, I think the one I used on one of the podcasts we had was, like, a birthday with no gifts. Like, everyone comes in, they're like, here's all the boxes, unwrap them. You're like, woohoo, and there's nothing in any of them. And they're like, you didn't expect that. Another. You're like, thanks. Muller is hereby named Irony Man. Very well. But yes, thank you all very much for the donations. We've only got a minute and a half left. I'm so... And most of it's probably just going to be him doing bad impressions of Sargon, apparently, so... I hope so. Another, as all women are factually want to do at work, why would Luke leave a map if he had no intention of wanting to be found? Uh, wait, I'm sorry, what was that third one again? How has no one just bumped into Wakanda after all these centuries? If they have all that vibranium, why not make Black Panther uniforms for everyone in the kingdom to be on the safe side? Why is Killmonger mad about racism in America like that's still a real thing in 2018? What's he going to do next, take a knee? How did T'Challa fall off the mountain into a river, only to be found by fishermen from a different mountain at a higher elevation? These are actually like, some of these are quotes yeah, from my video. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So cuz yeah. I was about to say I was about to say some of these like are they make sense as questions um, other than the obvious the one, straw man. But... I don't think I said why is he acting like racism is a real thing in America. I don't think I ever said that. Yeah, I don't but I don't know. I definitely said it's weird that he fell off a waterfall and ended up at the bottom of a mountain at a higher elevation. <laughs> it was the most retarded fucking sequence of events ever, but apparently that's irrelevant compared to the emotional journey. That's probably what he's going to argue, I guess. Uh, what was that about real in 2018 again? Ah, uh, see? Okay. So he's, he's, he's saying that I reference valid plot holes, but then I throw in that racism isn't a thing to try and get my political perspective across. But I never say that in my Black Panther video. Yeah, I I don't know anyone who's, who's said that racism doesn't exist. I mean, other than the sense that now, maybe like, structurally... I'm not mad, yeah. but this is like... Quinton levels of misrepresenting my yeah. work, but he's careful enough to not mention me by name. This is the the most bizarre f version of poisoning the well with a uh, with a straw man I've ever seen. I mean, this yeah, this is, is this is one of the oh, movie most classic he's, examples he's, of a straw man you could possibly find. He literally like took me and then s put stuff in me that's not actually me, and then beat it down as being like a piece of shit. This is like, yeah, that's you didn't you didn't counter me, mate. You counted some other thing called Mueller or something. It's, it's let me cherry pick the things that I it, it's not it's like cherry picking plus because you're cherry picking a thing that you invented 
And this is the thing, if, if this was happening, if people were like, man, it doesn't make sense that Jack sits on the door, blah, 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 blah. also heterosexual relationships are just stupid, no one should be anything but gay. But uh, yeah, the other plot point that's an issue in Titanic, you'd just be like, what the fuck was that? What did you just say about heterosexual? But like, show us that. Why can't you show us someone doing that? Heterodormative. I don't understand why it's so difficult. Why do you have to create straw men, Mr. Movie Bob? Is it because these people are boogeymen and they don't actually exist? I'm not saying that. I'm saying, is that possible? <laughs> okay. You should use you should use boogie person as a gender neutral term. I'll just use schloom. It'll refer to shloom. any person. <laughs> See how that works? It's a dastardly rhetorical man. sleight of hand and un. Yeah, yeah, they're dastardly. <laughs> they're being that's, the dastardly. That's yeah. some heavy irony right there. <laughs> oh, oof. Uh, the theme of this video is irony. How about that? They pull sleight of hand. Movie Bob, what did you just do? <laughs> whack from a whack Panther. At a higher elevation. Uh, what was that about real in 2018 again? See how that works? It's a dastardly no rhetorical sleight of hand, and unscrupulous culture critics are foisting it on impressionable viewers by the fa That's what <laughs> you're Bob, doing you're right now. <laughs> Bob wouldn't know what a scruple was if it if, bit him in his massive ass. You want, a, you want a culture critic? Go see uh, Macintosh again. That's He's the oh, official he's... culture critic. <laughs> Thousands, thanks to the ubiquity of plot hole criticism. Maybe if there were less. Okay, let me tell what? you about supply and demand, asshole. If there weren't so many fucking plot holes everywhere, you wouldn't have so many people talking about the plot holes. Supply and demand. That sounds like capitalist thinking. You utter horrible Nazi. I love capitalism. Uh, what was that about real in 2018 again? See how that works? It's a dastardly rhetorical sleight of hand, and unscrupulous culture critics are foisting it on impressionable viewers by the thousands, thanks to the ubiquity of plot hole criticism. Think of the children. None of this, of course, is to say that there's a wrong way to watch movies or that you yourself are. But. <laughs> Enjoy a nitpick video here or there, but I would agree that broadening your media oh, diet. Oh, man. Whoops. Oh, whoops. Um, what? actually. Um. <laughs> Uh, I love it how he I love the straw man cherry picking and then right after that the thing he says nobody is saying so what actually did say <laughs> oh thanks to the oh, missed you, Bob. Bob. criticism missed the memo there last, last week none it? of this of course is to say that there's a wrong way to watch movies or that you yourself are part of the problem if you've enjoyed a nitpick you, you just said we're part this of like is, a major problem that we're, we're like Leading Patrick people Williams. by the wayside with our own political ideas, and you just disagreed with Patrick Willems, yeah. who this video Patrick is in Williams support of. Legitimately says that there is a wrong way to watch movies. That that's an unironic thing he says. Yeah, and enjoy criticism from others. Bob, this movie's a fucking mess, and it's inconsistent, and you're just awful at making videos, which is why. After was... all of this time that you've spent, you get such little viewership, and you're like a meme. Because you're awful as, at this. As someone just mentioned as well, it's like he's saying, I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but he said like, the worst on YouTube, <laughs> and what was, the, what was the search term? Dumbest shit on YouTube. Nothing wrong with it, it's just the dumbest shit on YouTube. With dastardly rhetorical sleight of hand and unscrupulous culture critics are foisting it on impressionable Jeez. viewers by the thousands thanks to the ubiquity of plot hole criticism. <laughs> None of this, of course, is to say that there's a wrong way to watch movies or that you yourself are part of the problem if you've enjoyed a nitpick video here or there, but I would agree that broadening your media diet beyond that is always a good idea and rediscovering the concept of theme and emotional connection. What a movie may- uh, as if- oh. I think even Cinema Same. Sins might actually reference emotional connection here and there. I don't know. I haven't seen all the videos. He's. I think Movie Bob just hates anyone who's more <laughs> successful and popular than he is. Just hates uh, everyone that doesn't doesn't <laughs> act. Legitimately, I still I'm still contemplating the ubiquity of plot hole criticism. I I I, I criticize a, a lot of it. I don't criticize the plot hole. I, I, I mean, there's I there's a lot of it, but. Then again, there's a lot of plot holes to criticize, so maybe if films were written better and there weren't plot holes everywhere, then that wouldn't be an issue. But maybe maybe you should be encouraging good writing as a movie critic, Bob. Maybe that's he's, what you should be doing. He's concluded that this is logical, plot hole-related inconsistencies versus the assessment of theme and character, which to me is just like, who, what? So why have you separated them like that? As if you can't logically break down a character's progression or something like that. 
feel rather than whether or not the machinery by which it did so played fair or not is an overdue experience for a lot of us. In the words of Alfred Hitchcock, opining on the tendency of characters in scary or suspenseful movies to not simply go to the cops right away like they do in real life, they don't go to the police because it's boring. Yeah. What? That's, what well, because Hitchcock said it, that means it's genius. Hitchcock said a lot of things about inconsistencies in stories, so he's definitely not the right guy to quote for. And let's be honest, telling... man, like, if all this preventing your story from falling apart is the characters deciding they don't want to go to the police Maybe you just didn't for no a reason, story. yeah, you might want to work on your story. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this idea that if you cite, like, it, someone goes 2 plus 2 equals 5, Hemingway. It's like, that doesn't mean it was smart. <laughs> Hitchcock is a human being, he's not a god. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. Oh, one more thing. On Monday, September 24th, 2018... Oh, thank Christ, we're done. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> it's funny, Matt, Rags, you said earlier, uh, your movie is is bad or something like that in, re in reference to this video. I was going to correct you, and I, I was like, the, technically... I do that all the... I do that all the time where I call videos movies. Well, but the amount of time we spent on this one, I think it's safe to say it was basically a movie. Yeah, it's like I, I'm watching stuff on a screen and it's just it's all... Um, that was bad. That was something. What, 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 that okay. was... Let's, let's go with conclusions. I'll, I'll start. Um, Bob has is like one of the most agenda-driven YouTubers there is. Like, he's clearly motivated by... Uh, politics, and he hates anybody with a different political perspective, and he will assume that when they address media that they must be uh, criticizing it because it didn't support their political position, when I think in reality it's like the reverse like he he's actually seeing their politics before their points, if there's someone he disagrees with, like uh, if it's someone he does agree with, like Lindsay Ellis as he referenced, or Patrick Willems, or Just Right for example, he'll just listen to their points even if they don't make any, he'll just be like, assume them for him because the politics are correct. While the people who aren't, like Sargon, automatically uh, inject them into uh, whatever they... Like, Sargon's been talking about Predator recently, just just how the society works or whatever. And like, I could imagine Movie Bob just being like, that's not an assessment of Predator and its culture or how it would work, assuming stuff we've seen in the movies. That is literally you saying that socialism is bad. That's all it is. That's all it ever is, because you're, you're just an agenda. Um, and then the actual video here, th wow, he could really use a redraft because the flow is so confusing in terms of what he's actually trying to say. And I, I guess that's just how it works for him. And Jesus Christ, the editing is is ADHD levels of like, are you keeping up? I hope you and are. It takes so much time to do that shit too. Yeah, and then it he takes speaks. so much time to get all those images and he says them so fast that the amount of images he has to go through he just must be staggering he, he speaks so fucking fast for no other reason than I can discern other than he's a part of the escapist who has zero punctuation who speaks fast as well is that it like I like zero punctuation because he's more funny I like yeah uh, um, man yeah that's, that's my assessment you guys go ahead <laughs> <laughs> a jarbled mess of unnecessary, complicated, contradictory language. Uh, I mean, it, it's just a train wreck from beginning to end. He he flip flops. He's inconsistent. He clearly poisons the well and assumes the worst intentions of people. He does the thing that he says is bad to do, and then he says it's good now. But it's it's. It's a mess, man. Like, that was something else. That's a piece of work. Well, I like how I was introduced to these guys. First, it was just right back in the day. Then it was Patrick back to, to Bob. And with just right, he had an actual philosophy or he had some understanding of not only uh, cinema, but storytelling. So he, he's coming from a theoretical or at least a, a conceptual view of how to do things, even though he's obviously agenda driven. Then you have Patrick, who is sort of kind of half and half. I think he has some classical understanding of, of cinema, but he's blinded by his bias and his own emotions, with, of course, all the, the contradictions along the way. With Bob, it's, it's like Patrick up to 10. You know, it's just all the way. How far can we take uh, obsession with emotion and, and politics? And just talk as fast as possible. Get as many adjectives as you can 
with with nouns and predicates and just slam them together. And uh, I mean, he's not he's not a word salad. He's just like a, a drag racer salad. He's just like mm -hmm. how. F he said quasi empiricism. He must be. He must know what he's talking about. It's like say that's, that's the the classic example of calling someone. Uh, was an intellectual, a quasi-intellectual, uh, a pseudo-intellectual. That's a it's a pretty classic insult back in the day, and saying that oh he doesn't really know what he's talking about, but he sounds smart. This is exactly what Movie Bob is. He thinks he's smart, and he, and he constructs this narrative of words that I'm having even a problem listening to, let alone comprehending. So uh, <laughs> there you it, go. <laughs> And I, I can speak for Wolf. He's probably would have been dead at this point. <laughs> Blood coming out of his ears. Um, and I was going to say that we're we're near at four hours, so there's no way we'll be able to do another video. Um, That's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we should do this another time. Um, maybe get uh, less nauseating uh, people to, to critique. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> They're all nauseating. So um, but yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. I'll say that um, you've got and uh, yeah, it's a plot analysis I do once a week. Mm -hmm. How about you, Rags? You may as well throw your throw your hat in the ring. Why should they subscribe to I'm, you? You should subscribe to me because ah, uh, fucking shit. Uh, <laughs> you should subscribe to me because if you don't the terrorists win there you go see he puts his agenda in all of his immediate analysis stuff Fucking yeah rags man i was gonna say they probably all subscribe to you anyway because like you're like essentially on every one of these kind podcasts of so <laughs> and I'm, then, I'm i'm fairly regular and yeah i will until the end now i'll just be spamming the fucking the second channel it's called moolah i just make all these things public on there so many links in the chat i hope you guys can actually follow Either way, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you both for, for sticking through for so long. That is, I, we've been requested that video a lot. And I think it's because people both want to see Movie Bob um, watched and this particular one. He's a, he's a very special man. I'll um, just get through, I think there's like four Super Chats. Uh, or two, sorry. Um, Movie Bob went on a jag when he first worked for Escapist about how Tyler Perry was basically reinforcing negative stereotypes of black people. I'm sure you'll find a way to reconcile that with everything else he said. Movie Bob is, um, he's got, a, he's got a spaghetti brain with how everything connects, I think. Uh, I just realized I can give you money. I used to do people's fan fictions. What are you doing to movies and people's strange opinions on opinions? I used to do people's fan fictions. What are you doing? I don't, I'm, I don't quite follow that, but, um, either way, thank you all for the very kind donations. Thank you very much, Rags and Smart Boy. Been a fantastic guest and we will of course have you back but the thing is we're doing this once per week and i've already got a few other potential guests even next week is already we're, we're, we're hopefully having the uh cinema sin sins guy by the way Ooh. he's gonna come on and uh this will be after he's released his video i'm hoping we'll have a kind discourse but i think we might actually have our very first debate of sorts we're gonna be talking about Wait, black panther i think the guy who made the video on me um Oh, yeah, that was a really shit video. <laughs> yeah, well, he's making a new one, and apparently he's going to be coming on next time, or hopefully next week, uh, once we figure out a time, and uh, we can talk about Black Panther, because that will be interesting. But the, the, wow. the, we're, we're going to tackle... He's got some guts. No, that's a good thing, though. We can even, like, we can make it no bad blood. Oh, yeah. It'd it's nice. good, but oof. He and took some shots at you, too. He did, but... I'm willing to f let bygones be bygones. I'm sure we we must have taken mm -hmm. a few shots at him in in our in our review. I know Wolf did. <laughs> so that he could resist. It was, res it was a response. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that'll be next week, and obviously you can catch these on on the second channel. But other than that, I think that's it. Uh, so thanks again for coming, folks, and that's goodbye. <laughs>